So hey guys, how are you all? Welcome. So we are back with a brand new movie on what if Naruto becomes a super weapon for Android 18, but before we start, be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Now let's begin the story. Four people are in the backyard with two of them being a lot shorter, but look like the taller woman with red hair. These were Kasumi and Narumi Uzumaki Namikas, and they are seven years old. The others were an average height beautiful woman with long red hair that went down to her ankles that had two strands on the sides of her face, this was Kashina Yuzumaki Namika's their mother, the other person was a tall man who had spiky blonde hair and blue eyes with two bangs framing his face. He was wearing a usual jonin flak jacket, but he was also wearing a white short-sleeved coat with red flames on the bottom of it on the back, with the kanji written for fourth hokage. This person was Minato Namika's, the fourth hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village. They were currently working on chakra control exercises, knowing how large their reserves will be, and wanted them to have the best possible. Look mom, dad we did it. Narumi shouted happily with Kasumi grinning as well while standing on top of the tree branch. Yeah look. We made it to the top. Kasumi agreed with her own grin. Oh I'm so proud of my girls. They're going to be the best ever databane. Kashina grinned with a thumbs up. Alright girls come on down. Their father called out getting nods as they walked down the tree. Off to the side was a person who was watching them training made his heart break a bit seeing it happen. He was 12 years old and had spiky blonde hair with red tips on it. He was 5'9 which is tall for his age. This was Naruto Uzumaki the oldest son of Kashina and Minato, and the reason he's not happy is that he never received training from his parents ever since he was 7 from Kashina and Minato, but that stopped for some reason he was never able to figure out. He had to learn everything on his own and from others, such as his godmother Tsunade Senju, Makoto Uchiha, Higaku Uchiha, his friend Yugao Yuzuki, and Hiruzen Sirotobi. What no one knew except for them was he had some secrets of his own kept from his parents, was he was the Jinchuriki of the two-tailed demon cat the Nibi, or how he knew her as Matatabi. He loved her like a mother as she always cared about him when she found out that he wanted to get to know her, and that he respects the Biju, and wants to understand them more. He hadn't started training in her chakra much as he didn't want to rely on her or just make her seem like a weapon, but someone who is important to him. His other secret was that he had a dejutsu, but it was special compared to others, as he had a combination of the Sharingan and the Rinnegan. He didn't know how he got them, but he was training one day when he overheard Minato talking about him, but what made him sad was how little he seemed to care for him as he was talking to Jiraiya, and they were talking as if he had no importance. The hand let his emotions get the better of him ever, but he cried, but he felt pain in his eyes for some reason, but what he didn't know was that his eyes were changing to something else. When the pain died down, he went to the mirror to check what happened, and he saw his eyes had changed. His right eye was purple with one ring around it, and his left eye was red with a black circle and one tomo on it. He recognized the left eye as the Sharingan, but not the right eye, until he heard Matatabi tell him that it was the Rinnegan, that he had both the Jutsu. He got some help from Makoto and Fugaku after explaining to them as well as Tsunade and Hiruzen what had happened, making them wonder what his parents were doing or thinking about their son like this. They were surprised to hear about his new eyes and had thought about telling them, but Naruto said not to since he didn't care for their approval anymore. He had learned so much from them. His chakra control that he learned from Tsunade was incredible for someone with his reserves where he had nearly perfect control, and her Tejutsu style, which seemed to suit him perfectly, even though he couldn't use her super strength. She taught a medical ninjutsu for his team, since Matatabi could heal his wounds. Hugaku and Makoto trained him in how to use the Sharingan to evolve it where he could use it with ease and it wouldn't be as taxing. They also trained him in Jinjutsu in being able to cast with and without the Sharingan, to not rely on it like many other Ichihas did. Hiruzen trained him in Fuinjutsu and Ninjutsu in all five elements. He got help from a friend of his, Yugao Yuzuki, who had become a Kinjutsu specialist who taught him how to use a blade. He may not be as good as her right now, but she was confident he would surpass her someday, and even his mother Kashina. We find Naruto upstairs just hanging out when he heard his godfather talking to his parents about something, which was nothing new, but Ijiraya sounded serious about something which is unusual for him, so he decided to listen in on it. So how are the twins training coming along? Jiraiya asked the parents. They're doing really well. At the rate they're going they'll be great and fulfill the prophecy. I just know they'll succeed in it. Minato praised. My babies are going to be baddest when they're older as they continue to train. The world will be saved thanks to them. Kashina agreed, proud of her daughters. Good. We keep this up and everything will be okay in the end for us, and they will be the saviors of the world. I just know the prophecy is about them. Jiraiya boasted. Prophecy? He asked himself quietly not believing what he was hearing with everything making sense now to him. Everything made sense to him now, the reason for their neglect and why they're training them now, but why because of a prophecy. 
don't they know that prophecies aren't something to take seriously as they can change like life changes every day. It's something you can't predict. Hiraya has always been retarded, but this takes the cake, but this hurt him knowing that they'd only train him if he was the so-called child of prophecy and not real love. I'm done. I'm leaving this village forever. I had mentioned it to Tsunade, Mikoto, Fugaku, and here is in a couple times since I never felt like part of the family, and they'd come to accept it as it would be good for me to get away from them. I'll need to leave notes for them to have before I leave. He said to himself heading upstairs unaware of two individuals who had heard everything and knew what his life was like from his family. They were sickened with how they treated their son and Jiraiya for what a pig and disgusting person he was. Unknown figures. Those bastards. How dare they treat their own like this especially that disgusting pervert. She shouted angrily. Calm down Kami sister. The pervert will get what is coming to him eventually. As for the parents, something seems off with them. I'm just not sure what it is yet, but for now what should we do about Naruto-kun? I personally don't want him to go to another village. The second figure said easing her sister. What do you have in mind then Yami? Kami asked curiously. I was thinking of another planet altogether. How would you feel about sending him to Earth? You know what'll happen there eventually right? the earth could use his help after all. Yami smirked. True, but would he be able to do so much as he is with just Chakra? You know how strong Kai is, right? Kami asked, worried about their champion. I know it won't, so I was thinking of changing his DNA, where he'd be more than just human. How would you feel about us making him a Saiyan? He'd still keep his Chakra, but he'd be able to use Kai as well in the process. What do you think? She asked her sister. Kami just smirked, liking the idea. I think that's a great idea sister. Let's go greet him then. She said as they nodded and disappeared. But Naruto. Naruto had just finished copying scrolls from his father's library, wanting to advance in all areas, since he still had room to improve with him being only a high chunin, but wanted to get better, so he had gotten the rest of the books to become a seal master in Fuinjutsu. More jutsus for elemental ninjutsu for each affinity, and for wood style that Tsunade had given him, since he would be able to use it eventually. He picked up notes for the Rasengan and the Horatian, just to stick to his parents, that he learned those two jutsus without their help. He got some books from Yugao in Kinjutsu to further improve himself, more scrolls from Mikoto and Fugaku in Jinjutsu, more advanced to jutsu scrolls from Tsunade, and chakra control exercises he could do, since his reserves will continue to grow as he gets older. Now it was time for him to go as he was finishing packing, he was visited by Kami and Yami who appeared in his room putting him on edge as he got into a fighting stance. Hello Naruto Uzumaki. It's a pleasure to meet you. Kami smiled, making him blush. Hello. May I know who you are and how you know who I am? He asked not wanting to appear rude. Oh he's so polite. I knew he'd be so cute and respectful. It's nice to meet you, Naruto-kun. My name is Yami also known as the Shinigami, and this is my sister Kami. She introduced themselves to him. Naruto immediately got down on his knees bowing to the two goddesses. It's a pleasure to meet you both. What can I do for you? I'd like to think you didn't come here just to see me if I'm correct. He asked them getting nods and grins from both of them. Right you are Naruto-kun. We know of your family's struggle and your plan to leave the village. Kami said, getting a slow nod from the boy. We've come with an offer to send you to another planet called Earth. Not only that, but we also want to offer you something else that will help you while there. She told him. I'd be honored at the chance, but why help me? I'm sure there are more important things that you'd both be doing after all than helping someone like me. What else would you be offering me that could help me on earth? He asked. I'm glad you asked. The reason we're helping you is the fact that Minato is blowing his chance to be a real father to you, the same goes for Kashina as a mother, but we feel something is off with them, but we'll figure that out later, so don't worry about them. What we would be doing is alternating your DNA, so you'd be something more than human. You would be what is called a Saiyan who is a warrior race. We'll give you all the information you'll need about them if you choose to accept it. Yami told him. So I'll be half human half Saiyan, correct? He asked getting nods from them. I accept as I was planning on leaving anyway, but had no idea where I would go as Suno as allies with Konoha, Kumo would kill me to get Matatabi back, Kiri is in the middle of a civil war, and Iwa would kill me because of Minato being related to the bastard. Who would train me in the art of Kai, since I doubt I could learn about it on my own, since it's entirely new to me. Naruto pointed out. Very true about all accounts. We'll be sending you to someone who can teach you about Kai. He's a friend of ours and will be able to help you out with Kai. He's the guardian of the earth named Kami, but is not like me. We'll also check in on you from time to time to see how you're doing as well as teach you other subjects such as mathematics, literature, science, history, and any other subjects you would be interested in learning, such as other languages. Kami told him as he smiled in gratitude. Thank you for this opportunity. 
I look forward to learning from him and you. I can't tell you how grateful I am for this, since there aren't many people here who are actually nice to me except for the select few, and they are okay with me, do I need to do for the change to happen? The blonde asked them as they nodded. You don't need to do anything. Just lie down on the floor and then we can get started. It won't take long either. As soon as it finishes, we'll head out to Earth. Kami said with Yami nodding in agreement. Naruto did what he was told as he laid down on the floor as Kami and Yami got started on the ritual to turn him into a Saiyan. They put their hands on his head when a white glow appeared on their hands with the process beginning. Nothing happened at first, but everything started shaking around Konoha with the power that was being poured out as Naruto was being turned into a Saiyan. Not long later the shaking stopped with the goddesses taking their hands off of Naruto. He fluttered his eyes open to reveal Onyx's eyes. That wasn't the only change that occurred with his hair color changing to black with red blonde tips. His body grew a couple of inches and he gained more muscle, but was still on the lean muscular build. How do you feel? Yami asked him. I feel great like a new person. He said not noticing the tail. What do you think Matatabi? He asked the biju. Oh my. I like the look kitten, much cuter than you were before. I look forward to seeing what we can accomplish together. We should get going before someone comes to check on you as I'm sure everyone feels the power. The demon cat told him. We should get going now. We have a lot to do with your new life. Kami said as they disappeared with a note on the desk as Minato, Kishina, and Jiraiya ran in. Where's Naruto-kun? Kishina asked. I'm not sure. One moment we were outside with the girls, but I don't remember a lot. However the next moment the power surge that appeared came from here. Whatever happened in here must have been something to cause shaking to be felt. Minato said, confused. Oh who cares about him? We have the twins to worry about right now. Jiraiya said uncaringly, making the two parents look at him like he's crazy. What do you mean? We care about him. Kashina said angrily when she saw a note on the desk. What's this? She asked as she opened it. As she read it she began to tear up and then started sobbing after finishing it, dropping to the floor on her knees as she wailed in misery of her oldest son being gone now. Bonato took the letter and read it as well when he grew sad and started tearing up as well, thinking that his son was gone now, but the thing is he couldn't remember anything that had happened to him or his wife that lead up to this. I'm just glad the brat's gone now. He wasn't anything special to begin with. Jiraiya stated as he disappeared in smoke being summoned by the toads as Hiruzen, Mikoto, Fugaku, and Tsunade ran in with a look of panic that was on their faces. Bonato what happened here? We all felt power coming from here and needed to figure out what had happened. Hiruzen said. We don't know. What we knew was we were training the twins, and then the shaking started and we could feel coming from this room. Something else happened though, we can't seem to remember anything. My wife was the same way as we both don't know what happened. Why would Naruto leave? Did something happen that caused this? He asked the old cage who grew angry, but also curious about them not remembering anything. How dare you? You say you don't remember, but what's there to remember, you two neglected your oldest and basically abandoned him. Neither of you spent time with him or trained him in any way. I was more like a parent to him than any of you were. Mikoto shouted at them angrily, tears streaming down her cheeks. What? I'd never do something like that. I was training my son when he was younger, then I had a meeting with Yuraya and then nothing. The next thing I know is me and Minato are outside training the kids along with Yuraya with everything shaking. Kishina explained, confused about what had happened to her. Yuraya? What was the meeting about exactly? Fugaku asked curiously. It was about some dumb prophecy proclaiming how the twins would save the world and how we need to train them as soon as possible, along with pushing Naruto to the side, since he wouldn't be as important. Of course me and Minato said no seeing how they were only two at the time and that he was our son. After that, nothing. I can't remember anything afterwards. Hmm. I might have an idea, but you won't like it, but I think Jiraiya placed you both in a Jinjutsu of sorts that made you go along with it and forget about Naruto-kun. Now that I think about it, he never did like the boy because he was a prodigy and a genius where Jiraiya wasn't, so he may have been jealous of him. I think my foolish student would do this to the Hokage and his wife just to get what he wanted. Hiruzen said in shame with Tsunade of the same mind as his teammate and everyone else feeling anger towards the pervert. How dare that bastard. He ruined our lives and made our sons a living hell. I'm going to kill him for this and Minato you will not stop me. What I want to know is where is my son. She shrieked in anger, not noticing Yami appearing behind her. I know where he is, and I couldn't agree more with the pervert seeing how he royally messed up with the prophecy. She said scaring everyone, making them jump back into a battle stance. Who are you? Do you know where he is? Minato asked calmer, but you could hear as much desperation in his voice much like everyone else. Oh come now Minato-kun. I'm surprised you don't recognize me. After all, we last saw each other seven years ago only. 
And to answer your question about your son, he's somewhere else entirely and no he's not in any village, but a different planet. After seeing his treatment here, we decided to help the boy out by giving him a chance to start a new life. Yami stated getting pale expressions from Minato and Kishina with everyone else confused. Shinigami-sama. Minato yelled out bowing at her along with Kishina panicking with everyone else paling and following suit. What do you mean Naruto-kun is on another planet? Why would you send him to another planet instead of another village? Hiruzen asked, getting his breathing under control. Like I said, it was an offer by me and Kami to give him a new life. Another reason is that he'll be able to make friends his age, since it wasn't happening here with how the majority of the people here thought of him. And for why another planet instead of a village, well to answer that he said there wasn't really any place he could go, since he'd either be killed or captured and sent back here. Iwai can understand and the same goes for Kumo since he contains Nibi and would want her back. Suna would send him back here, and Kiri is in the middle of a civil war right now, so we thought sending him to another planet would be the best option for him to make friends and to grow as a person. The goddess told them making everyone, but Minato and Kishina not in acceptance, but the latter two were horrified with what they learned. Our son's a Jinchiriki. When did this happen and how did it happen? Kishina asked, tearing up at the new information. Yes, he was on a mission when he came across the Jinchiriki of the Nibi, but instead of killing her, he freed the Biju, without killing her host, and sealed her and himself at the behest of said Biju, who wanted to know more about him. It happened about two years ago when he had just become a Chunin. They're close and have a strong bond with one another too. I'm going to bring the pervert back now and go, I'll make sure that Naruto-kun knows that what happened wasn't your fault and that you still love him. Yami said as she snapped her fingers as Jiraiya showed back up looking around confused. Ta-ta everyone. She disappeared, leaving the group alone. Where am I? Minato, Kishina. What's going on here? He asked when all of a sudden a seal was placed on him that suppressed his chakra. What? What did you do to me? Release me at once, he shouted in disbelief at what just happened. You Jiraiya are what is going on. How could you use us as tools for some prophecy that we never agreed with? Minato sneered at his former teacher. What are you talking about? I didn't do anything. He tried to lie, while he was sweating thinking they knew and that they were freed. We know everything Jiraiya. You placed us in a Jinjutsu because we didn't agree with what you were saying about the prophecy or our son. You made us forget about him and you never liked him so this worked out for you. Minato told him coldly. Seeing no way of getting out of it, he decides to reveal his true feelings. Yes, yeah, so what he's nothing. You two weren't seeing the bigger picture. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of one boy, but you're right I never liked him. This was the best chance to get rid of him and I wouldn't even care if he died. He was everything I wasn't, so I did what needed to be done, and the twins are the children of prophecy. Surely you all can't see it right? Jiraiya asked getting looks that said, the fuck is wrong with you? You monster. I should kill you right now for what you did to our family. I hope you rot in hell for what this you bastard. Kishina yelled at him as her killing intent flaring at him, making him piss himself in fear. W wait, sensei help me. Tsunade, we're teammates. I only did this for the world so it could be saved. He tried to get their help, but was surprised to see them shake their heads at him. No Jiraiya, I'm no longer your sensei. You're a traitor who has brought shame to this village and will be punished accordingly. I can't believe you've fallen so low. Hiruzen coldly told him, making him flinch. Sensei is right. You're a monster and a disgrace to Konoha. We're no longer teammates either as you've manipulated Minato and Kishina into your crazy plans. I'm ashamed to even know you for this. Planning on getting a child killed and abandoned like what you were planning to do makes me feel sick to even know you. I never want to see you again, trash. Don't you know that prophecies are meant to be taken lightly as they change often? You really are stupid. Tsunade growled as she stepped back with Hiruzen. You will be tried and will be put for execution for your crimes against me, my wife, and my family. He told his former teacher. Anbu. He ordered as two Anbu showed up. Take him away and make sure he's locked up good with no chance of escape. The Hokage ordered with the two nodding, grabbing Jiraiya and disappearing in a shunshin. Ashina dropped down to her knees in anguish for what had happened with her oldest child being gone now because of some pervert, as Minato dropped with her holding her close to comfort her, as the twins' daughters walked in confused on what was going on, until they were explained with everything that they had found out making them angry at the pervert for ruining their family. The twins had always loved their brother and would try to help him out and they'd hang out when they could, but they had spent most of their time training and they'd be tired, always making it hard to spend time with him. Oh Niruchan. I am so sorry my sweet boy. I hope wherever you're at you'll be safe and happy. Kishina cried sobbing into her husband's chest. The lookout. Naruto and Kami had appeared in what looked like a giant circular plane with one building in the middle of it, with some plants on the sides, which made no sense to him. The first thing he noticed was the air felt thinner to him. 
this is the lookout Naruto Kun. Now before I leave, you should take a look at your body, since there might have been some changes to it when you became a Saiyan. Kami said, mirthful looking forward to his reaction to him having a tail. What do you Maya he said as he saw something behind him making him surprised to see a tail that was attached to him now. What the hell. I have a tail he shouted in surprise with Kami laughing at his reaction. You knew I'd react like this didn't you? He deadpanned at the goddess. Ilti is charged, but it's part of what makes them Saiyans. Remember to train hard and to learn everything you can from your teachers. Remember I'll also be stopping by to teach you everything you'd learn in school, since I don't want you to become just a martial artist, but to have a brain too. Before I leave I will leave one last gift with you she said, getting a nod from him. She tapped his forehead giving him all the information about the Saiyan race, including the Uzuru form, the Super Saiyan of legend, but he wouldn't worry about that right now. He nodded good. Take care Naruto-kun. She said, disappearing leaving him alone. Not long after she left two figures walked out of the building to find Naruto meditating impressing them not expecting someone his age to be one to meditate, as most people his age would rather do something that would be exciting. Hearing footsteps approaching him, ending his time in his mindscape with Matatabi. Hello. Are you Naruto Uzumaki? The dark individual asked. He nodded, answering his question. Are you Mr. Popo and Kami? I was told that I would be training under you both and I want to thank you for this. Did she explain my situation? He asked them. I'm Kami the guardian of earth and this is Mr. Popo. She did indeed tell us everything about you and I'd like to tell you that you will learn much and things won't be the same. I would like to know more about this chakra that you possess along with Kai now if you wouldn't mind explaining. He said getting a nod from Naruto who went on to explain chakra is and not only that but also the biju, the different things that are possible with chakra. That's quite the energy source you have, Naruto. I'd like to learn more about it, but we have to begin your training in Kai since you're new to it, you'll be spending four years training with me, and then after that you'll be sparring with someone who will be joining us for another three years. I foresee someone doing great things with you. I want you to be prepared for when he does show up and that you'll be up to my level by then. Kami told him seriously. I'll do my best, Kami-sama. I'm ready when you are to begin. Naruto as they began his new training journey. He has spirit, that's for sure. I wonder how he'll do in learning how to use Kai, and I can tell he'll have a bright future with the two goddesses teaching him outside of training. Good luck Naruto-san. He thought to himself. A lot has happened ever since he came to the lookout and began his training in Kai and further his skills as a shinobi. The training in Kai was very difficult and one of the hardest things he's ever had to endure, but he was happy he was getting stronger. He first learned about Kai and the theories behind it, since he didn't want to be just strong, but intelligent too. The guardian Kami was a kind old man who had been looking after Earth for hundreds of years, and it was amazing what he could learn from him. In Kai he's learned how to fly, shoot Kai blasts, even managed to create a Kai blade like Kakashi's lightning blade. He applied weights for him such as wristbands which each weighed 50 pounds, boots that weighed 100 pounds each, and the undershirt he wore added 150 pounds. His control was easier for him to do with his past training in chakra, in learning to control it to the maximum. His training in chakra had been amazing to say the least. He was a well-rounded shinobi who was adept in every category, but better in some than others. He excelled in fuinjutsu, ninjutsu, and tijutsu, but was still good in jinjutsu and kinjutsu. His repertoire in ninjutsu was astounding as he had mastered all his elemental manipulation exercises and had most of his techniques where he only needed one hand sign for the jutsu, thanks to shadow clones helping with his training. He was at a cage level in ninjutsu. He was now a seal master and could even rival his parents. He constantly had a sparring partner, which helped improve his tojutsu. His jinjutsu was at a moderate rate as he could now cast B-rank jinjutsu and break out of nearly any illusion on him. He didn't have anyone to really train with in kinjutsu, but he still practiced, so he wouldn't get rusty. He had also trained much with Matatabi in being able to use her chakra. After a long time of training with it, he fought her which was a hard battle, but he ended up winning and taking her chakra for himself, giving him a blue flaming cloak that would appear. He could even go full biju mode. When he was training his Rin Sharingan, he'd learned a lot about them and what different abilities that he had obtained from them. He had inherited four techniques that came from the Sharingan portion. He could cast a Matarasu which are black flames he summons that when used they last for seven days and seven nights, unless he cancels them. Susanoo is when he can summon a silver samurai avatar that could rival the third ability he obtained was Tsukyomi, which is the ultimate Jinjutsu, where the target is sent to another world in the mind, where they are trapped in a crucified manner and are at the caster's mercy for 72 hours, but in reality it's for 3 seconds. The last ability is called Time Skip, which allows him to jump ahead for one tenth of a second, giving him the chance to launch a surprise attack on someone. 
He learned everything about the Rinnegan portion and the different paths he could create, but decided not to, not feeling the need to do that. All this made him a cage-level shinobi after his training was done. During his time there, he met another Saiyan who went by the name Son Goku, but he just called him Goku. He was a cheerful person and was someone who loved to fight strong people. He was told about a tournament that he would be fighting in and there he'd reunite with his friends. It piqued his curiosity, but decided not to join it with him, since he had a lot he still needed to do. Part of his training was spent in a special room where one year passes on the inside, where only a day passes in the outside of the room, which made it perfect room to train in, but he could only stay in there for two days, being the maximum amount of time he could stay in there for. True to her words Kami had helped him with his education. She would come visit and teach him on different subjects such as mathematics, history, science, English. When he turned 16 she started teaching college courses after getting into one online. He decided to get a few bachelor's and master's degrees in several fields, such as nuclear physics, chemistry, engineering, applied mathematics, and computer science. This was possible thanks to shadow clones to help, and by the time he was 22, he had said master's degrees in those fields. He was proud of his achievements, but knew it wouldn't have been possible without her help and willingness to teach him. She had even helped him get a driver's license, since people flying is so bizarre. Speaking of her counterpart Yami, he'd been told by her and Kami that his negligence wasn't his parents' fault, which confused him not understanding, until they explained how Jiraiya had caught them by surprise and placed them in a Jinjutsu to where they would follow through with his orders without question, which was his prophecy crap and how that Jiraiya hated him. Which worked even better towards his goal. It pissed him off with what the man had done to his family and nearly destroyed it. He was even told that his unleashed power once he became a Saiyan released them from the Jinjutsu, and when they found out what he had done, Minato arrested him and had him executed for what he did to them and his family. He was so happy to find out that his parents missed him and hoped that he was okay. He forgave his parents for what they did since they were in a Jinjutsu, otherwise they wouldn't have gone with it which he found out they did say no, which is why Jiraiya did what he did. Naruto had finished his training on the lookout with the Guardian of the Earth Kami and Mr. Popo. He had been taught everything they knew and was grateful for everything they did for him. It was the same with the goddess Kami having taught him everything he'll need on earth. He was wearing a black shirt with the Uzumaki clan symbol on the back of the shirt that had white trimmings on the ends of the sleeves with a white hoodie jacket, blue jeans with some casual black shoes. This is it Naruto-kun. I couldn't be any more proud of you with everything you've learned from me. I have nothing left to teach you with, so you should go out into the world and experience life. Go get a girlfriend or two and have a family. She said with a grin as he blushed at the thought, but shook it off and grumbled under his breath. Thank you for everything Kami-sama. I, I owe you for everything you've done for me in all these years, and I couldn't be any more grateful. Naruto said as he tried to bow, but she glared at him and quickly corrected himself and hugged her when she returned it. In these last 11 years I've been teaching you, you've become like a little brother to me, and I couldn't have been any happier having met you. I'm sorry to say that this will be the last time we see each other for a long time, so make me proud as I know you will. Kami said with a smile on her beautiful face. She stepped back as Kami the guardian of Earth and Mr. Popo stepped forward. You've done well in your training in these years with us, and we hope you'll continue to improve and enjoy your life on Earth. You are welcome here anytime you need something. The elder guardian said with a grandfatherly smile at him. I will and thank you for everything. I'll do my best to make you proud. Naruto said to his longtime teacher as they shook hands. Kami pulled out a piece of paper that had something written on it and gave it to Naruto who looked at him curiously making chuckle. It's where you can find Goku and his friends. Apparently, they're getting together and you can meet up with them and introduce yourself to them. I think that would be a good start for you. He told his student who nodded and pocketed the nod as he floated in the air and flew away from the lookout as the place grew smaller and smaller until he couldn't see it anymore. An hour later. Naruto was flying towards where Goku was, and judging by his energy signature he wasn't much further away, but for some reason it was getting smaller, which made him nervous. He decided to go faster and push more energy out, which almost sounded like a sonic boom, wanting to know what was going on. He arrived at the scene where he last felt Goku's energy, and it was completely gone, and he was surrounded by four people, three of them being adults and one being a child. Goku's body was disappearing though, and it made him wonder what was going on until he realized it. Kami, what do you have planned for him? He asked himself, thinking what the Guardian of Earth had planned. He saw the green-looking man with two antennas pick up the boy who seemed to have gained his interest. Excuse me, but what are you doing with the kid Piccolo? A voice asked, catching them by surprise, wondering if it was another Saiyan like Raditz. Up here. Naruto said, as they looked up to see him smiling at them. And who are you? Piccolo asked warily when he noticed the appendage behind him. You're a Saiyan. Are you with Raditz? He asked. 
yes I'm a Saiyan and no I'm nothing like him or what is left of the Saiyan race. He answered, making them relax a little. Then who are you? We've never seen you before. An old man with a pointy head who had a white beard and mustache. I'm Naruto I was on my way to see Goku after all, it's been 5 years since I saw the man, but I felt his energy go down until it disappeared. If I had known he was fighting someone like this, I would have gotten here sooner. He explained with a frown. How do you know Goku if you claim to know him? Bulma asked, on edge about him being a Saiyan despite finding him really attractive. I trained with him for 3 years before he went to the martial arts tournament 5 years ago. He should have mentioned me, anyway we can talk about that later, what's going on here? Naruto asked, wanting to get back on track, making them relax a bit. They went on to explain everything with how Raditz arrived on Earth looking for Goku and wanting him to join him and the other Saiyans when he refused he kidnapped his son who he learned was Gohan and threatened to take him with him in Goku's place if he didn't kill 100 humans by tomorrow. But instead of doing that he and Piccolo teamed up and they killed him with Goku sacrificing himself to do it and how right before Raditz died he revealed that four other Saiyans would be here in a year's time who were much stronger than him. I see and you're taking the kid to help bring out his full potential huh? He asked, with him nodding as they looked at the unconscious four-year-old. I want to help you guys prepare for this threat. What's the plan now with Piccolo training Gohan, but what about you three? He asked, turning to the three humans. We'll need to gather our friends and then start training. A year isn't a long time, so we have to hurry. A short bald man around his age said as they nodded. Fair enough. Mind if I go with you guys I haven't had much contact with anyone in years except for my teachers he said as they nodded. We'll be back in a year and we'll be ready for the Saiyans by then. Piccolo said as he flew off with Gohan in his arms still. As we head back to Kame House, you can tell us about yourself, since you'll be helping us it would be nice to know more about you. The bald man said with Naruto agreeing. Let's see, Goku told me about you guys and what you looked like, and I gotta say he was spot on with his details he chuckled seeing their confused expressions. By the bald head and his short, who looked like a monk you must be Krillin. The old man with a white beard and is bald, must make you Master Rashi, and the blue-haired young woman is Bulma Briefs. He said as he pointed at each person he described from what Goku told him, getting murmuring from the two guys and a smile from Bulma. Great. We have a lot of work to do, but what do we tell Chichi? Bulma paled at the thought of telling her that Gohan was with Piccolo now, while the others aside from Naruto were pawing as well, not wanting to have that conversation. An hour later. Naruto, Rashi, and Bulma were at Kame House, having sent Krillin off to break the news to Chichi on what had happened. Bulma hadn't been able to take her eyes off of Naruto as she worked on the scouter finding the technology to be amazing. He was very handsome and seemed really nice, and much more than a fighter like everyone else. So, Naruto-kun, what can you tell us about yourself? I'd like to get to know more since we'll be seeing each other more. Bulma flirted with a wink as he raised an eyebrow at her, but nodded. What do you want to know? I'm not one to hide many things from people. Naruto said with a shrug with Bulma nodding liking that he is being so open. What were you doing in Kami's lookout all this time and why did you stay there for so long? If you stayed there for 11 years then why so long? She asked him, her curiosity piqued her interest. Training and getting an education from one of my other teachers. I didn't just train the whole time but also went to school, though it was all online, but I made it work. He shrugged, her interest growing. Did you finish college? Who taught you and why do it all online and on the lookout instead of being there in person? What about your family, aren't they worried about you? She asked, but she saw his eyes dull a little, making her wonder what happened. You don't have to tell me if it makes you uncomfortable. She told him. It's fine. It's just a long story and I've gotten over what had happened. I don't mind telling you, but you may not believe me. He said, who nodded at him. Now you have me curious even more Naruto-kun. What wouldn't I believe exactly? She asked with a raised eyebrow in curiosity. A lot. He simply said. I'll explain another time. I'd like to learn more about you though. He smiled at her who nodded with a smile. They spent the next two hours conversing and Naruto was impressed with her intellect and the adventures that she had been on with the Dragon Balls and laughed when she told him about when she first met Goku. What are you going to do now? She asked him. He shrugged his shoulders. I'm not sure. I don't have a home since I've been living on the lookout but I'll figure something out. He answered. Why not stay with me? We have plenty of space and it would be nice to have someone my age there and who won't cheat on me. She said and whispered the last part venomously. Are you sure? He asked her wanting to make sure as he wasn't one to impose on others. Absolutely. It's no trouble at all. She reassured him. Alright then, but what was about a cheating guy? He said with a menacing grin hoping he didn't hear correctly. Bulma sighed but smiled at seeing him get upset with him, showing how much he cared about her, despite just meeting hours prior. 
My last boyfriend became famous from playing baseball and it got to his head getting attention from all sorts of women leading him to cheating on me. She explained as she frowned at the thought of her ex. It's his loss if he can't keep it in his damn pants. You're a beautiful and smart woman. If he can't see how great you are, then it's his loss, but if I ever meet him. I'm kicking him in the balls. He said with a grin that made her shiver a little at his protectiveness. Thanks, Naruto-kun. It's getting late and Krillin still isn't back yet, so we probably won't see him until tomorrow. This'll give me time to finish working on the scouter that Goku's brother had. I see. Well don't be up too late working on it. It was nice meeting you and don't worry about the others. We'll figure something out. He said smiling at the blue-haired beauty who nodded as she went back to work on the scouter and he went to bed. Good night Naruto. She said quietly, but he heard it still. Good night Bulma. He said back as he left to her work, but he never saw her looking at his disappearing figure. He was a mystery to her and she wanted to know more about him, finding him quite interesting. He was different from her other friends, he may be a fighter, but he's also much more than that. I can't wait to learn more about you Naruto. You are quite an interesting person and not to mention so handsome too dot she thought liking what she saw. One week later. It's been a month since Naruto met Bulma, Krillin, and Master Rashi, with a lot happening in that time. Bulma had spent the entire night working on the scouter and she finished it in the morning and found out that the scouter could detect a person's power levels. She tested it with the guys wanting to see what theirs were and it made Naruto laugh at the memory. Krillin had 210, Master Rashi had 139, and this is what made Naruto laugh was their expressions from them including Bulma when she checked his power level which was a strong 9450 and that was without any flaring of his chakra, Kai, or activating his eyes or using any of Matatabi's chakra. They had spent the last month using the scouter to look for their other friends to tell them about what was going on so they could prepare for the Saiyans. They found a tall bald man that had three eyes with one on his forehead, this was Tien. Another was a short who looked like a kid with pale white skin and large red dots on his cheeks while wearing a black cap, his name was Shiatsu. The last person was a tall man who had long black hair that went to his lower back, he had a scar on his left cheek, this was Yamcha, and as soon as he heard the name, he did what he had told Bulma and kicked him in the balls which made him squeal like a soprano. It nearly made his balls drop. It made the guys cringe at the pain that he must have felt and Bulma laughed and gave Naruto a kiss on the cheek for it. The four decided to take their training to Korin and then the lookout. Naruto would have gone with them, but he felt like he'd already learned everything he wanted to learn from there and wanted to stick with Bulma as he enjoyed her company. Now why didn't you go with the others to train, I know you're strong and all, but wouldn't you want to get stronger to prepare for the other Saiyans that'll be here? Bulma asked as they approached West City in her hover car. It'll be fine. As much as I want to train and get stronger, I've hit my maximum for getting strong as I can use this year to adjust to life. If I were to train now, I wouldn't get much stronger if at all, with how I trained as much as I did for the last 11 years. Besides, I want to get to know you more and see what West City is like. He explained getting a nod from the blue-haired beauty who agreed with his assessment, who smiled at her new friend looking forward to showing him around. You're going to love it at home. I can show you around and introduce you to my parents. Bulma said excited to show him around the city and her house along with her lab. Same here. If your parents are anything like you then I know we'll get along just fine. He smiled at her as she smiled back. What do you think of Bulma, Matatabi? Naruto asked her tenant sister figure through their link. She's something else. She's very attractive and seems interested in you, so here's what you should do when you get to her house, take her in the bedroom and have your way with her. Matatabi purred out in his mind. Naruto nearly choked on his spit hearing the question. Big sister what the hell? He yelled in his head. What's the problem? She's showing some interest in you and I approve of her. Besides, you know you feel attracted to her as well right? She asked, already knowing the answer. You're not wrong with her being attractive, but we met only a week ago. He argued back, but she kept her grin on. Don't take too long then. She may lose interest and go to someone else. She teased seeing his eye twitch making her laugh at his reaction. You're so mean big sis. You just love to pick on me don't you? He grumbled. Anyway, what do you think about all of this that we've learned so far about the other Saiyans that'll be here in a year? He asked, changing the subject. It'll be a hard battle, so we'll need to be ready for them, but I'm confident in our abilities. Your power level is nearly 10,000 in your base without your Rin Sharingan, flaring your Kai, Chakra, and my Chakra, which will give you a great chance. But we won't know until we see them in person, so all we can do is prepare for the worst. The demon cat said seriously with Naruto nodding his head in agreement. Right. I let you sleep for now sis. Thank you for everything you've done for me since we met. He said to her as he hugged her. She nodded and licked his face showing her affections until he disappeared from the mindscape. Naruto. Are you there? 
Bulma asked, waving her hand in front of him trying to get his attention. Huh? Sorry, did you say something? He asked, with her eye twitching in annoyance at being ignored. I was trying to get your attention. You were spacing out there. What were you doing? She asked when she had seen his eyes were glazed over for a minute. Sorry about that. I was just lost in thought. He apologized, grinning sheepishly, scratching the back of his head. Fine. Well, we're almost there and then I can start showing you around. I also want to ask about something else I've been wondering about since we met but couldn't with how busy we've been this last week. She said, pointing to his tail getting a nod from him knowing what she's referring to. The rest of the flight was spent in quiet with Naruto thinking about how he's going to explain since he's not a typical Saiyan. After some time thinking about it, he would just tell her whatever she would want to know since he has nothing to hide from her. When they arrived in the city Naruto could see how populated it was and the number of buildings it had. It was something to see as it was bigger than Konoha. They eventually made it to what seemed to be her house with a logo on the front with a letter CC which stood for Capsule Corporations. Bulma had told them how her dad had started the company. Welcome to Capsule Corporation Naruto. Let's get you settled in and then I can introduce you to mom and dad. She grinned in excitement wanting to introduce him as she found him to be quite the looker and was something else. Hi mom, dad. She called out getting her parents' attention. Hi Bulma. Who's this handsome young man with you? Her mother greeted with a smile. She was a beautiful woman with blonde hair that had a frazzle look, along with her eyes were closed. She was wearing a white and yellow striped shirt with short white shorts and some sandals. This is Naruto Uzumaki and a friend of ours, well he's friends with Goku more, but he'll be staying with us while he adjusts to living in the city. She explained getting a nod from her as her father was staring at the Saiyan with calculating eyes when he noticed the tail he had, making him wonder if he was like Goku in some way. Good to meet you, my boy. I'm Dot there's plenty of room here and don't be afraid to ask us if you need anything. He said with a nod, smiling at the boy having a good feeling about him. Thank you. I will try not to be a bother and I hope to get to know you both well along with Bulma here. He said, shaking his hand. Oh we have much to discuss now that we have the time, so I hope you are ready for the questions. Bulma said with a smile that made him gulp while being rather nervous. Of course. He smiled nervously, not liking that smile she's giving him. Though easy on him dear. Her father shouted feeling sorry for the guy. Bulma led Naruto to where his room will be, which is a big room that could hold several people. He would need to decorate it, but he had something important to do at the moment. So, you wanted to talk about my tale? He asked, seeing her nod. Yes, I can only guess you're a Saiyan like Goku, but I want to know where you came from. I doubt that you are like that Raditz guy, but I'm also curious about how you came here because you didn't exist until 11 years ago. Bulma questioned, narrowing her eyes in suspicion. He nodded and was impressed with her being able to figure that much out so quickly. She's very smart and not afraid to call someone out when it's necessary which made her that more interesting to him. Well, as you may guess I'm not from Earth or am I from Planet Vegeta. I need to tell you that I was originally human, but circumstances led to me changing to a Saiyan. He cryptically answered, confusing her, but listened to what he had to say. He went on to explain everything about his home planet, that energy that they use called Chakra. He also explained to her about how her family had been treating him for years until he left, but he had found out that his godfather was the cause of his neglect from them. How he got an offer from the Kami and Yami goddesses to become a Saiyan. By the time he was done, she was looking at him with concern in her eyes which Naruto smiled at her and squeezed her hand, indicating that he was alright. I'm sorry that you had to deal with it and that your family was messed with, but at least it's all better now right? You also have friends here like me and Goku. Thank you for telling me this and I hope that maybe one day I can meet your family as they seem to be really nice. She told him her smile, not leaving her face. Me too. You'd get along with them, but maybe someday you will. I'd like to get to know the city now, so where do we start? He asked but got nervous when he saw a gleam in her eye, making him think that maybe that wasn't the right thing to say. Eleven months have gone by since Naruto started living with the briefs and it was enjoyable for him. He had gotten to know the family a lot and he had to say they were a great family. They didn't care if he was different from others or even humans for that matter. They had done so much for him in the short time they'd known him, they knew about the incoming Saiyans, so they helped him prepare by building a gravity chambers room that could go up 100 times Earth gravity, which was nothing to laugh at. Bulma had as promised showed him around West City and had gotten him some stuff for his room along with different clothes since he didn't have much to wear when he left the lookout. As he had predicted once she found out about Chakra, she wanted to learn all she could about it, which had made him chuckle at how excited she was experimenting with the energy source. 
another thing that Naruto had learned about Bulma was that she was dating Yamcha or at least used to when she broke up with him after getting tired of him cheating on her with other women, which he could understand as it's wrong to cheat on someone, especially someone like Bulma, because one, she can make you suffer the consequences for it, and two, she doesn't deserve that kind of treatment. Naruto had found Bulma to be beyond beautiful and found himself to be having feelings for the woman, but would keep it to himself with her going through a breakup. Maybe after the Saiyan attack he'll tell her about his feelings, despite being nervous himself about it, since this would be something new to him, as he never had felt something like this before for someone back in the elemental nations. He hadn't trained a whole lot as he was focusing mainly on keeping his skills sharp, since he was just making sure he would be prepared for when the Saiyans eventually got here. His power level had increased as well, but overall he was happy with himself with how these past months had gone by. During these last few months, she, along with himself and Master Rashi, had been collecting the Dragon Balls so they could revive Goku for the fight. They had managed to collect them all, so all they were doing was waiting for the right time to do it. Naruto and Bulma were in the living room playing cards with Naruto having a smirk on his face with Bulma looking frustrated. Damn it. How are you so good at these kinds of games? I don't think I've ever seen you lose at all. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you were cheating, but I know that's not like you. I say after we deal with these Saiyans, we go to a casino and see how lucky you really get. She grumbled at his luck, wanting to see if he's just as good at gambling. What can I say, it's a gift. He grinned cheekily, making her mumble about dumb cute Saiyans which made him chuckle. That's fine with me, I haven't been to a casino in a long while anyway, which I'm curious about to see how different they are compared to the ones in the elemental nations. He said in a thinking pose. You better keep your word, if you ever go back to your home planet, I want to go with you as I'm curious to see what it's like there along with your family and friends. I need to thank a number of people for looking after you when your parents were under the illusion. Bulma said, getting a thinking expression from Naruto. Maybe. I'm not sure when we could go with everything going on right now. It's about time for the Saiyans to get here, so we need to focus on them for the time being don't you think? He asked, when she nodded her head at him. It was at that moment, Rashi rushed into the room with a look of panic on his face, making Naruto raise his eyebrow, wondering what's got him so antsy. We need to summon the dragon now. I just talked to Goku. Was all Rashi said, getting quick nods from the two seeing how serious he's being. Something must have happened for their plans to start earlier than expected. The summoning of Shenron happens like in canon with only Naruto being there, but nothing else happened. Well, if the Saiyans are getting here sooner than expected, I should get going myself. I've been keeping an eye on everyone, especially Piccolo and Gohan, making sure the kid would be safe. I have a feeling that the fighting will take place where they're at, so I should head over there. Naruto said, with Rashi nodding and Bulma was looking nervous as she was rubbing her arm. Please be careful Naruto. I don't want anything to happen to you or for you to die for that matter. Come back to me safely. She said timidly looking at his onyx eyes making him smile tenderly at her. I promise. He said, with a smile making he smiled back at him wanting to believe him. In a moment of bravery she leaned up and kissed him on the cheek blushing at what she did. Naruto was taken by surprise, having not expected her to do something like that as he was blushing himself, but had a giant grin on his face. Now go and save this planet. She ordered trying to push him along so she could get her blush under control. Alright. Thanks for everything and I'll see you soon. He told her, kissing her cheek before flying off to where Gohan and Piccolo were leaving a shocked Bulma in place as she placed a hand on where he had kissed her cheek. Naruto had made it to where Gohan and Piccolo were, and he was impressed with what he could sense from them, especially Gohan. Despite being four years old, he had grown exponentially. Piccolo had gotten much stronger too, and if he was being honest with himself, he was looking forward to fighting the Saiyans. He'd never fought someone with Kai before outside of sparring, and that's different. Hey guys. How'd training go? He asked, wanting to know what had gone on in the last year. It went fine, kid's tough, but let's hope it's enough. Piccolo said, when Naruto noticed he was being stared at by Gohan. You okay kid? Naruto asked, raising his eyebrow wondering what's going through his mind. Who are you? I've never seen you before. Gohan said with narrowed eyes. He chuckled at how serious he's being which he thought looked cute on the kid, but decided to tell him to ease the kid's worries. I'm Naruto Uzumaki and I'm a friend of your dad. We trained together for a few years a long time ago. Yes I'm a Saiyan like you and Goku, but I don't want my home being invaded, so I'll be sticking around to help out. He explained with a grin. Gohan just stared at him for what seemed like forever before his expression turned into a smile, nodding his head in acceptance. Oh yeah. Dad mentioned you once before about a great sparring partner. We appreciate the help with this, so thank you Mr. Naruto. He said, when Krillin landed beside them with a nervous expression. Hey guys. You ready for this? Because to be honest I'm not sure if I am. 
Krillin said with a grimace. Being stressed about it won't help either, so just relax and keep a calm head. You've done all you can to prepare for this, so just do what you can and it'll be alright. He tried calming the bald guy hoping to placate him. Thanks man. He said when he noticed Gohan. Oh wow, you look like you've grown a lot, kid. Krillin said in surprise. How bad was the training with Piccolo? He whispered to him, not wanting the green Namekian to hear. Training wasn't that bad. He was strict and pushed me to my limits, but I learned a lot from him. The four-year-old assured the bald man easing his worries. How was your training Krillin? He asked him, but was confused when he saw the fear in his eyes. First rule of Popo's training, do not talk about Popo's training. He cried in fear as he began shaking. Relax Krillin, it was just a question. They're almost here though, I sense four signatures heading towards us are traveling quite fast too if I might add. Naruto said in mild surprise, but he smirked at what was to come with the other three nodding as Krillin and Gohan talked for a bit while Piccolo kept an eye on Naruto as he wondered about him. Well look who we have here, four idiots waiting in the middle of nowhere. They heard someone say, making them look up to see four floating people. One was a tall bald man who was wearing armor like Raditz was, except his shoulder pads were yellow instead of brown. The next two people were young women who were shorter than himself. One of them had long spiky black hair wearing a pink tube top that showed off her mid-D cup breasts, she also had a muscular yet toned body and a plump ass. The other one was wearing black and red and had her hair in braids. She was also wearing bands on her wrists and had DD cup breasts, a toned body, and a heart-shaped ass. The last person had black spiky hair that looked like a widow's peak. He wore the same armor except with blue spandex under it. He was about the same height as girls from the looks of it. He knew two of them were definitely Saiyans with their tails like his wrapped around their waists, but the girls didn't seem to have theirs making him wonder if they had theirs cut off or something at one point. It's about time you four got here. Been waiting for some time to meet other Saiyans. Naruto said with a smirk getting confused looks from the four. What do you mean? The short guy asked curiously as he wondered who this guy was. He'd never seen him before ever in his life. Vegeta, look at his waist. The spiky haired girl said, getting his attention. Vegeta followed where she was pointing at. Well, look at this, a tail. You must be a Saiyan, but who are you since I've never seen you before? He asked. And you won't know, since it's none of your business MC Widow's Peak. Naruto smirked with said person was scowling at his fellow Saiyan while the others, except for the bald one, were snickering at him. Enough. Vegeta shouted as they descended to the ground standing across from the four of them. We're here for the Dragon Balls, and you are going to tell us where they're at. He demanded folding his arms across his chest. You should just hand them over, you're no match for us Saiyans. It would be easier if you would just do what he says before you get hurt. The bald Saiyan said with a smirk, but he got no answers from anyone. Even if we did know where they were, we'd never give them up. I suggest you shut up, get back in your pods, and get the hell away from our home. And besides, you'd have to wait a long time before they could even be used again, so tough shit. Naruto smirked at the anger appearing on Vegeta and Nappa. Oh you wanna go, you low class cum, I bet the reason we don't even know you is because of how weak you are. Nappa said with his own smirk, but all he got was a laugh out of him. Before that, why don't we check to see what your power levels are, don't you think so Vegeta? The girl with the pink tube asked. Fine. Let's see what we got here. Vegeta said as they used their scouters to check for their power levels. Krillin had a power level of 1250, Piccolo had 1500, Gohan had 1150 which weren't bad, but it was Naruto's that got their attention. He had a power level of 6500, which was way higher than the others, but the smirk that they saw made them think it was only the beginning. Of course Nappa didn't think much of it thinking that was his strongest. Really worm is that all? 6500 is your power level. Weak. Nappa shouted, hoping to rile his fellow Saiyan up. Enough talk. We're here to fight and that's what we're going to do. Piccolo interrupted their conversation, getting into a stance along with Krillin and Gohan. Why don't we take this guy and then you two can take the rest? Cauliflow offered a suggestion, wanting to fight Naruto. Her friend didn't look so sure about it, as she was fidgeting a little, something that Naruto noticed raising an eyebrow. Sure whatever. Just don't lose. He's different from the others I can tell that much about. Vegeta said rather seriously, making the three Saiyans look at him in surprise, since he only showed this seriousness around Frieza. Alright. Let's go. Naruto said as he flew away with the female Saiyans following him with one looking nervous, and the other couldn't keep the grin off her face in excitement. Naruto was flying away from the others, and after getting far enough he landed with them following him. He decided to try to get some information from the two women. Why did you want to fight me alone, instead of having the other two fight me as well? He was mainly curious. You seem strong and I couldn't let them have fun when we could have a go at you. She told him. 
I don't think I even got your names, so before we do this, wanna introduce yourselves. He asked. I'm Kalifla and this is my best friend Kale. And your name? Kalifla asked. Naruto Uzumaki. He said. A maelstrom, huh? Great name. Now, I wanna see how strong you really are, so bring it on. She yelled charging at him when she got close enough she threw a punch at him, he ducked under it and went for a kick to her head, but she managed to block it with her arms. Kalifla went for another punch aiming for his face, but he caught her fist, spun her around, and threw her at a mountain making her crash into it. He stayed there for a bit waiting for her to come out which wasn't long before the rubble exploded with her walking out of it, but she had some bruises, but she wasn't angry, she was grinning from ear to ear, making him sweat drop at her. You're strong, but what's your max power level? I want to fight you at your strongest. Kalifla said, wanting to really test herself against him. What about Kale over there? Shouldn't she help you? Trust me, if you want my max you'll want to work together against me. He said with a smirk as he started channeling his power. Rox began floating into the air as a wide aura became visible around him. He screamed out bringing out more power which lasted a minute with the dust kicking up in the air. Her scouter was going off like crazy with her and Kale looking on with widened eyes in shock at what they were seeing. It's not stopping. His power level is at 19,000, which is just higher than Vegeta's max, and it's still rising. Kalifla called out. You unbelievable. H how is th this popos possible? Kale muttered in shock and slight fear. I'm still not done yet. Naruto called out as he continued to raise his power with a giant roar, making everything explode around him as everything quieted down. Naruto walked out of the dust appearing in view with his arms across his chest while looking on him passively, not showing any emotion. See Kalifla, W what is his p-power lev level? Kale stuttered out with a gulp. I it's 50,000 that's impossible. Kalifla shouted in denial, but you could see a small smirk on her face. Bring it on. You're strong, I can see that, but we'll still beat you. She yelled as she disappeared and appeared in front of him punching him in the gut, but he managed to block it, sending him skidding back a bit. Not a bad punch. Is that all you have though? He asked curiously, boredly. Let's see you handle this. She growled kneeing him in the chest, making him jump back to avoid the hit, but wasn't prepared for Kale to suddenly appear punching him in the face crashing into the mountain. Nice shot Kale. Looks like we'll need to take him on together. Shall we, my protege? She asked with a grin as they rose their power to the maximum. Naruto appeared out of the rubble with a smirk, as if what just happened didn't do anything to him. You're strong whiskers, so let's see what else you got. She shouted as she and Kale charged at Naruto with him following suit as they met in the middle. But the others. Nappa and Vegeta had grown some strange green things that they called Cybermen. They decided to have some fun and make it a contest doing one versus one fights with Yamcha going first. It goes the same as canon. Krillin had just finished killing the Cybermen and was getting ready to fight Nappa when they all felt someone's power. Vegeta grew serious since that power wasn't from Cauliflower Kale. He decided to check his scouter and when he did he nearly broke it when he read what the power level said. What is it Vegeta? Nappa asked, confused seeing his leader get nervous about something. That Saiyan's power level is 50,000. He gritted his teeth in anger. But that's impossible. Nappa denied eyes wide. No, it isn't. If what I saw was true, then we can't afford to play around with them. Kill them all, but leave the Namekian alive so he can tell us the location of the Dragon Balls. Vegeta said as Nappa grumbled but complied. Naruto, Kalifla, and Kale. Naruto, Kalifla, and Kale were trading blows on each other. He had to give the two credit, they had great teamwork and could cover each other very well and without even communicating. It was at that time when he dodged Kalifla's charge making her crash into the mountain head first, leaving him with just Kale. Kale threw a leg sweep, making him fall forward, but he used his hand to catch his balance and he flipped back onto his feet, but she was already on him continuing their battle. Naruto pushed her back, gaining some distance when he shot some energy blasts at her. Kale was forced to jump away and dodge the incoming blasts. She was getting frustrated because her and Kalifla hadn't been able to cause any real damage to him. You're a tough bastard ain't ya? Why are you here on this planet when you could be anywhere else? Kalifla asked, not mockingly, but more curiously. It's my home. I grew up here for 11 years and I've come to enjoy this planet and the people here. His answer was simple, yet they could hear the joy in his voice. Let's see what else you got. She said, punching her fist into her palm with a grin on her face in excitement. She dashed at him again throwing a punch, but he caught it, grabbed her wrist and threw her over his shoulder, but had to dodge seeing multiple Kai blasts being sent at him, which he had to jump back to avoid them. She didn't get a chance to do anything else as Naruto disappeared in a blur surprising them as they couldn't see him. They looked around for him, but were not able to see him when he appeared behind her, not able to react quick enough he kicked her in the back. 
but didn't stop as he followed up with a five combination of three punches and two kicks, causing her yell in pain as she crashed into the ground with a loud thud. Naruto followed by sending out three Kai blasts at her, hoping to knock her out with that assault. Polifla. Kale shouted in shock at seeing her opponent move so fast. She barely had time to block fist with her arms, but she had to wince from the power coming from them. Come on, you can do better than that, right? He asked, but noticed she was hesitating for some reason, which confused him. He would need to figure out what's going on. Naruto disappeared again like with Kalifla and appeared in front of her going for a knee to her chest, but she managed to catch it and grabbed his leg and swung him around before throwing him towards the mountain, but he managed to catch himself and jumped off it and landed on his feet. By this point Kalifla had managed to get back up, but you could see she wasn't looking the best with several bruises and cuts on her body. We don't need to fight you know. I don't want to fight either of you, I can tell you're here against your will. He said to them getting their attention. So what? It's not like we can do anything against the prince. He's stronger than both of us. Kalifla said, with Kayla nodding a little sad. Why not stay with me then? It can end here and you can live here with us on earth. He said, surprising the two, not expecting an invitation like that. Even if we wanted to, Vegeta would find us and it wouldn't be good. Kale said. Enough talking, we have a job to do, we're going to do it. Kalifla said as she held her hands out with a Kai blast forming, except it was much bigger than normal ones, and they were red. Crush cannon. Several red Kai blasts came out in rapid succession as they hit him causing an explosion. They waited for the dust to settle so they could see if it hit or not. Did I get him? She asked as she was panting a little from the attack as she put a lot of her power into it. I I think so Kale started to say, but they saw someone walking out of the smoke, revealing it to be Naruto with no injuries or anything of the sort on him. What the hell? I put everything I had into that attack. Kalifla shouted in disbelief. Once Naruto was in complete view, he looked like nothing had happened to him, no scratches, no burn marks, nothing. His eyes however had changed. They were purple instead of his normal black which had some strange designs and some strange looking tomos in them. It was something they'd never seen before. What's with the eyes? They're different from before. Kalifla stated. Naruto didn't say anything as he went through hand signs further confusing the two Saiyans, not knowing what he's doing as he inhaled deeply. Fire style. Fireball jutsu. Naruto exhaled as a giant fireball escaped his mouth heading towards the two Saiyans. They could feel the heat coming from it but didn't have time to think about it as they had to dodge the flames, not wanting to get burned, but it gave Naruto the time to appear before Kale as she went for a punch, but he caught her fist and kneed her in the gut, making her spit out saliva. Not having time to react, he punched her in the face, breaking her nose with a sickening crunch, knocking her into the ground, knocking her out. The dust settled and Kale saw that she was knocked out and was tied up which made her tense seeing her friend like that. Easy, she'll be fine. Nothing will happen to her. I can promise you that. I don't want to fight anymore. Please give up and I can send you somewhere safe. He told the female Saiyan who just stared at him. She continued to stare at him for a moment until she sighed and nodded slowly, knowing she couldn't beat him and knew he would keep them safe. It was strange, she had never met anyone like this before who didn't want to fight and yet was so strong. This was a Saiyan she'd never met before and it wasn't a bad thing. Okay. What do you want me to do now? She asked. I have a friend at this place who can look after you too and provide a home for the time being. She's nice, but I'd warn your friend not to say anything to piss her off. He said, with a nervous laugh which got one out of Kale who knew exactly how her friend was. What about you though? What are you going to do? She asked as she picked up her friend, lighting her shoulder. I'm going to go fight the other two. Vegeta and McBaldi. It shouldn't take too long, and hopefully this whole thing will be over. The former blonde told her who nodded, but gave him a serious expression. Be careful, Vegeta and Nappa may choose to transform into giant apes using the moon, making them much stronger. They have control over that form too, so watch your back. He pulled out his phone to call Bulma to let her know what's happening and who to expect. Hey Bulma, you there? He asked through the phone. Oh my god Naruto. Are you okay what's happening there? What happened to the Saiyans you were fighting? Did you win, you won right, she asked quickly and was nearly panicking. I'm fine Bulma and yes I fraught them, but a few things came to light and so, it's a little complicated. He said a little nervous. She sighed at this. What do you mean? She asked. Well he started as he went on to explain how they were more or less being forced to fight, since Vegeta was stronger than them, with Kalifla excited to fight, but was forced to do what he said, along with Kale, not liking to fight that much. How he promised he'd handle Vegeta and would protect them from him. He knocked one of them out and talked to the other one into giving up and could stay with us at the brief's mansion. When he was done explaining she took everything in, sighing and understanding. I understand Naruto, you can't help yourself in wanting to help others can you? 
she asked, not seeing him scratch his head sheepishly knowing how true that was. They can stay with us. And Naruto, be careful if this Vegeta guy is stronger than the others, then it'll be harder. You better win. After this, you owe me a date mister. She said, with a smile. I will and thank you. Wait what? He asked, but he heard the hanging up, making him not sure what just happened, but he sealed his phone away. Well, let's go see how everyone else is doing. When I left I sensed others arriving on the scene, I can only imagine it was the others joining to help fight Vegeta and Nappa. He said as he flew off in their direction. When Naruto made it back to the others, he saw some dead bodies with them being Yamcha who was in a crater, Tien who was missing an arm, he had no idea where Chiatsu was, and he could see Piccolo wasn't looking so good having multiple bruises and different injuries on him, looking to be drawing his last breaths, along with Krillin not doing much better, and Gohin was kneeling next to Piccolo. He realized how late he was, and how he didn't make it back fast enough to save any of them, which meant there wouldn't be any more Dragon Balls. Naruto saw Nappa heading towards Gohin, and knew he had to get in the way. He disappeared and reappeared in front of the giant and kicked him in the chin, sending him flying back landing next to the kid. You alright? He asked, not taking his eyes off the Saiyan men. I'm fine Mr. Naruto. I, it's just I I felt so weak. I wasn't able to do anything to help them. The big guy was too strong for everyone. Gohin said, clenching his fist in anger. You rest easy kid, let me handle him. I want you to go over to where Krillin is and wait for your dad. He should be here soon. He told him, who nodded with a smile at hearing his father would be here soon. Ha. Like you could take us both on. We're not like those weak Saiyan girls. Nappa sneered after he recovered from the attack. We'll see about that. You don't seem very bright to underestimate me like this. He smirked, seeing a vein appear on Nappa's head. Shut up you low-class trash. He said, making Naruto roll his eyes at the dumb insult that wasn't even offensive. You're annoying. Was all Naruto said as Nappa was getting angry at his attitude. He charged his Kai until the white aura surrounded him, making it visible for everyone to see. Gohin and Krillin were in fear at seeing his power, but Naruto looked bored, not being impressed with his power. He felt more from Kale and Caulifla when he fought them. Nappa didn't waste any time as he charged at him with a series of kicks and punches, but Naruto was dodging with the same bored expression on his face. Nappa growing frustrated changed his attack to adding punches into it, but it did little as he continued to dodge them easily. The giant Saiyan grew angrier as he released more power making him faster, but much to his shock, the outcome was still the same. He went for a punch to his face, but Naruto disappeared and landed on his head with a smirk, pissing him off more. Nappa went to grab him leaving him open, Naruto vanished again, appearing in front of him throwing an uppercut to his stomach, making him hunch over spitting up blood. He wasn't done as he went with a three-punch combo, sending him flying back crashing into the mountains. Vegeta was watching this and was getting worried seeing his second-in-command getting tossed around like a ragdoll. He hadn't expected this no-name Saiyan to be this strong. He couldn't worry about him just yet as he knew Nappa was far from done yet. And he was right when the rubble erupted with a raging Nappa appearing. He had a large amount of injuries on him and tick marks on his head. You're dead, you're nobody. I'm an elite Saiyan. You can't be beating me like this. I refuse to believe it. Nappa yelled in denial. He opened his mouth gathering Kai in it for an attack, something that Naruto noticed immediately. Not long after he shot a beam from his mouth heading straight for Naruto who merely smirked, but no one saw it. Naruto extended his hand out as Kai formed around it until it was two feet away from him as the beam got closer, he swung his hand with a yell, slicing the beam and two passing by him, shocking everyone there, especially the two Saiyans who were looking in disbelief. You're done. He said with a serious expression vanishing from his spot with Nappa doing the same as their fists collided sending out small shockwaves as they continued trading blows for several minutes until Naruto dodged a punch, throwing an elbow to his face, sending him skidding back. He wasn't done as he sent out several Kai blasts at him, forcing him to dodge by flying into the air, but he saw the blasts follow him instead of hitting where he was. Naruto appeared in front of him and punched him in the chest, sending him back as the blasts connected with his back causing an explosion. When the smoke cleared, Nappa crashed to where Vegeta was, and he looked broken with his bones shattered, several cuts on his body, he was missing an arm, and had blood leaking down his head. Looks like he's done. What about you prince, what will you do? He asked, when he sensed someone appear on what looked like a yellow cloud. Daddy. Gohin said excitedly. Goku. Krillin said feeling the same as Gohin. Damn Goku's power increased dramatically. He's not close to me yet, but to get this much stronger in a year is incredible. Naruto was impressed with his friend's power. This is impossible. Kakarot was nowhere near this strong a year ago when he fought Raditz, and now this no-name Saiyan has beaten not only Caulifla and Kale, but now Nappa. Damn it, he growled mentally trying to decide what he's going to do. Hey Naruto. Wow you've gotten stronger since I last saw you. 
I'd like to spar with you sometime, but first we need to deal with him. Goku said, regarding Vegeta with Naruto agreeing with him. You can fight him. I'm confident that you can handle him, but be careful as we don't know how much stronger he is compared to the others. He told the orange guy wearing Saiyan who nodded in seriousness. Pathetic Nappa. I warned you to be cautious of this guy, but you ignored it and now look at you, so weak, pathetic, and a broken man. I have no use for someone who is missing an arm and can barely walk. Vegeta said as he grabbed his arm and suddenly threw him into the air. They weren't expecting that or what happened next. He channeled his power and it was astounding as gusts of wind were being blown, making everyone except Naruto cover their eyes, not knowing what he's doing, but was shocked at what he did. He blasted the injured Saiyan until there was nothing left of the buff Saiyan, knowing that he had killed his teammate. This disturbed everyone except Naruto since he was aware of how cruel he was due to what Kale had told him. This could have been them if they came back as failures. Goku and Vegeta flew off to another part after Goku convinced him to fight somewhere else so his friend's bodies wouldn't be destroyed in the process. This gave Naruto the time to really check on Gohan and Krillin, seeing how they are looking pretty beat up from the fight against Nappa. Here, let me do a quick scan of your injuries. He told the duo who looked at him in mild surprise. You're a healer? Krillin asked. Yes. Back in my old village, I was trained by my godmother in medicine and how to use my kai to heal rather than just to fight, but it also took precise control so you don't do more harm to the body. Just hold still and let me do this. He explained as they nodded. They were in awe when they saw his hands glowing green which lasted a few minutes which they assumed was him doing a diagnosis. So how bad is it? Krillin asked, not beating around the bush. Well you've definitely got some broken ribs along with a concussion on you Krillin. Gohin however isn't as bad compared to you, so I'd suggest you two go back to Kame House where everyone is. He told them. But what about? Gohin was about to protest, but Naruto interrupted. Though I'm sure your mother is worried sick about you and no need to worry about your old man. I'll keep an eye on him and help him out should he need it. You can trust me to do that kid. Now let me heal you a bit before you leave. He told the duo who nodded and decided to trust him to watch over Goku as they flew off toward the small island. Now let's see what you can do, Goku. You've got much stronger, I can tell that much, but will it be enough against Vegeta? He asked out loud. The fight goes as canon to the point of Goku hitting him with a X4 Kaiken in their beams clash. Son of a bitch. This can't be happening. I'm the prince. I'm the best one of all and he's just a low-class warrior. He shouted to the heavens in rage at being bested by this low-class weakling. After raging for a few minutes he got himself under control, knowing that getting upset won't do anything to help him. He smirked as an idea came to mind. I was going to do this later, but it's mainly used to take out cities, and here I am using it to take down one person. He said with a smirk still on his face as his plan came to mind. Vegeta flew back to Goku after a while as something he noticed changed, having to alter his plan a bit, but the result would still be the same. So you destroyed the moon huh? It makes no difference whether there's one here or not. We discovered that not every planet has a moon like this one which made our jobs harder, so we discovered a means in creating an artificial moon that does the job just as well. He said, as a small white orb appeared in his hand before he tossed it into the sky laughing like a madman, knowing what was to come. While this was going on Naruto was nearby watching the whole thing and was now becoming worried since this would make him much stronger, where Goku would need more time to recover, so it was up to him to fight Vegeta. While he was thinking this, Vegeta had begun his transformation and it was something to see from another's perspective. Vegeta grew to the size of the Kaiubi having learned to control his great ape form and knew how strong it was. He could feel the effects from the moon calling out to him to transform, but he was resisting, wanting to fight him with Matatabi's biju form. It made him excited to see how they would do together against him. You want to take a shot at a Matatabi? It would give you a chance to cut loose and have some fun. What do you say? He asked his sister figure tenant. Oh, you sure know how to treat a woman, Naruto-kun. She purred at him. Let's do it. It'll be great to stretch and get some action for once. She agreed excitedly. Alright let's go. He shouted as he let Matatabi take control as she began her own transformation. As Naruto was going through the Biju transformation, Goku was having a hard time handling Vegeta's new form. Not only was he stronger now, but he was still just as fast. His body had been beaten and had most of his bones broken after he caught him and squeezed his body to the point of all of his bones breaking. It was out of nowhere was Vegeta launched several feet away, forcing him to drop Goku who groaned in pain from the fall. Okay who the hell did that Vegeta in his great ape form ask in irritation. He looked around looking for the source when he saw a creature that was just as big as he was. It was a giant cat that seemed to be made out of blue flames, the cat had two different eye colors, with one being yellow and the other green. To finish it off, the cat had two tails swishing behind her. 
what he couldn't see was that Naruto was in her head, so he could not only help her, but separate himself from her, should he need to do so as they figured that they could fight together rather than just as one. That would be me, asshole. Matatabi shouted as she stood across from him with her fangs out to see. Who or what are you? You're nothing I've ever seen before, so who are you and where did you come from? He demanded gruffly. I'll humor you, my name is Matatabi, and you're going to get your ass kicked by me and my partner. She said, narrowing her eyes as she lunged at Vegeta with her claws ready to swipe him. I'm Prince Vegeta, the prince of all Saiyans. I'm not afraid of you little kitty. He roared, not intimidated by the demon cat. Matatabi dashed at her with Vegeta in his stance, who ducked under a swipe from her claw and retaliated with a punch to her cheek, but she used one of her tails to catch it and used it to bring him closer to her and didn't have time to dodge this one as she sliced his armor with her claws, making him roar in pain before he was hit with her other tail, making him crash into the mountain. It didn't take long for him to get out of the rubble as he roared and prepared a Kai blast from his mouth. Matatabi saw this and charged a tailed beast bomb of her own, making both attacks to be impressive. When they were ready, they fired their respective attacks at each other, causing a struggle to come between the two, but Naruto who was with her, added his own chakra to the jutsu began to overpower his own, making him get frustrated until it completely overpowered and shattered the beam, with it hitting him directly causing a giant explosion. Again Vegeta wouldn't stay down for long as he suddenly appeared in front of Matatabi and swung his fists at the cat catching her by surprise, hitting her in the cheek with a sudden five-punch combo, not expecting the attack sent her back, but not enough to force her away. You could see earthquakes happening with the two giants fighting each blow they would cause on one another. Having had enough of this battle, Naruto got an idea as he unsealed his sword having a plan form in his head. What are you thinking little brother? Got a plan of sorts? She asked through their mental link. I'm going to go for the tail and cut it off while you hold him in place. You think you can do that for me to get close enough? He'll be protective of it knowing what would happen if someone managed to cut it, but with you helping it'll make things easier. He told her, making her hum in thought. I can do that. Just be careful though as like you said, he'll have his guard up, but I'll do what I can to keep him busy for you. Better be quick about it. She said as he nodded and cut the link off with their plan in motion now. Naruto jumped out of Matatabi's head with the Saiyan's eyes going wide at seeing this, not knowing what the bastard had planned, but he couldn't think on it for too long, as Matatabi was there in an instant as she instantly was on him. Fire style. Blazing meteors. She shouted as she sent out multiple fireballs that were the size of them. Vegeta could do nothing but take on the onslaught as he tried to avoid them, but Matatabi was holding him with her tails and claws, making it near impossible to get away. This gave Naruto the opportunity to approach his tail, but he was caught off guard when Vegeta was able to get out of her grasp and used his tail to hit him into the ground that created a crater. Naruto. She called out to her host in worry seeing him take a hit like that. Worry about yourself. Vegeta said, charging at her with impressive speed forcing her on the defensive, evading his strikes or block with her paws and tails. He's impressive I'll say that much. He doesn't go down that easily. She commented with a grin still on her face. I'm fine by the way, no need to worry about me. He groaned as he slowly got up. He's tough I'll give him that, but we can take him. You seem to be having fun fighting him. I know it's been years since you fought someone. He said, seeing the usual Cheshire grin on her face when she's either excited about something or she's up to something. Alright Matatabi, I need you to hold him down now so I can finish this. He shouted, getting up from the crater he was in as he held out his hand, as five different orbs appeared on each finger being a different element. Wind, water, earth, fire, and lightning. They grew to the size of softballs, but the power they held was enough to damage the Kaiubi itself. Think about that for a minute. That's how much power this attack will have. Five elements combination. Hell's almighty beam. He shouted. The orbs changed to beams with each heading for Vegeta who was distracted by Matatabi who had a grin on her face as she jumped away just in time, with Vegeta not seeing the attack coming until the last second. Oh shy dot, he didn't finish as he was hit by the attack. Nice shot Naruto-kun. She grinned, liking how strong her host had gotten in the years they spent together. Thanks, but it's not over until he's out for the count. Naruto said, not wanting to lose focus or celebrate too early. The dust finally settled to reveal Vegeta in his ape form still, but he wasn't looking as good as he did before. He had cuts all over his body, lots of bruises and blood was running down his face. He was holding his shoulder which seemed to be gravely injured. Now's my chance. Naruto stated as he dashed at him at very fast speeds too much for Vegeta to react in time as he felt his tail he cut off. God damn it. Vegeta said as he began shrinking back into his normal form. By the time he was back to normal he was panting heavily from exhaustion, knowing how much stress it puts on the body when it came to using that form. Adding to the injuries he had, it made things even worse for him. 
How dare you? The prince growled, but was shut up instantly when Naruto kicked him in the chin, sending him into the air. Naruto disappeared via Shunshin and appeared behind him as he kicked him with an axe kick, which sent him crashing into the ground, causing a crater. Vegeta didn't have many options left on what to do. He normally wouldn't do something like this, but he decided that retreating would be the best thing for him to do. He pulled out a remote and pushed a button and tossed it as he waited for his pot to come to him. Normally Naruto wouldn't wait on what his opponent would do, but his sane instincts were telling me to let him go, as much as he didn't want to do it, he knew that Vegeta would get stronger from this and could give him a challenge. He was worthy to be the prince of the Saiyan race, but he would need to go stronger to face him again. He watched as the pod landed next to him as he crawled into it. I'll be back and when I do everyone is dead. Mark my words you trash. His voice echoed as the pod disappeared from view into space. Naruto sighed in relief knowing that the battle was over now. The question now on his mind was, what's next? He didn't get to think much when Matatabi sat in his lap in her smaller form. Naruto had just seen Vegeta disappear from view and turn towards his friend who wasn't looking good at all, with the amount of broken bones that Goku had. He would definitely be in the hospital for months until he would get a senzu bean, which would speed up the process for now though, he'd heal him until the others arrived. He was glad that Vegeta had left already as he could sense the others were on their way here, along with Kale, Caulifla, Gohan, and Krillin. Hold still Goku, I'm going to heal you the best I can, but you'll still need some extensive care. Naruto said, as his hands glowed green and started healing him with Goku sighing in relief, as he could feel the pain was less. Thanks Naruto. It's been a few years. Glad you were able to help us out against Vegeta. He was a tough one, but what happened with the two girls that were with him? He asked, wanting to know what happened to his fellow Saiyans. They should be with Bulma and the others. I knocked out one of them and I convinced the other to stop the fight. We will be getting company though from our friends who should be getting here in about an hour or so, judging by the speed that they're going. He mused, but was looking forward to seeing them again. He also knew that Bulma would be concerned about him and would be checking on him for injuries, which was something he didn't mind in the slightest. Goku nodded and tried to give a thumbs up, but pain racked his body from just moving his arm a little. He settled with just the nod as Naruto continued to use medical ninjutsu on him to make the pain more bearable to heal some of the more extensive injuries. An hour later, Naruto had finished healing Goku to the point of no constant pains from moving his body, but he would still need to go to the hospital. They were just talking when they heard what sounded like engines approaching them, getting them to look up when they saw a capsule plane that was pretty big that could hold everyone from how it looked. They were waving at it, hoping to get their attention and to their joy, they appeared to have done so when they saw it descending to them. It didn't take long for the ship to land, and when the ramp opened up two blurs could be seen running out until they were both tackled with one with Bulma who was hugging him and checking him for injuries, and the other was Kai Kai, who was doing the same to Goku. Oh Goku, are you okay? Where does it hurt? I was so worried about you when you fought that Saiyan. Kai Kai said, as she continued fussing over her husband. Are you okay Naruto? You fraud all of them and even got hurt. Is there anything wrong? Bulma asked, worried over her crush. We're fine Bulma. I'm not hurt. Matatabi is already healing me of what damage was done to me, but I can't say the same for Goku. I healed what I could, but he needs to go to the hospital for his recovery and his other injuries. Naruto answered with her nodding before she suddenly broke down crying at the loss of her friends. Naruto just held her as she cried into his chest. Off to the side Caulifla and Kale were looking a little down, knowing that this was their fault for the death of their friends. Naruto noticed this immediately. It's not your fault. I know you didn't want to do this, but you had no choice in this, so don't blame yourselves. Alright. He asked, getting slow nods from them. Let's get Goku, Krillin and go into the hospital to get them checked out and see the extensive damage and what they'll need to recover. He suggested, as everyone agreed. What about Mr. Piccolo and the others? Shouldn't they get proper burials? Gohan asked, the others looked at each other unsure about Piccolo, but agreed since he helped fight against them. An hour later, they had managed to find everyone except for Chiaotsu who had blown himself up and got into preservation pods. They were now on their way to the hospital, thinking over what to do next. I've been thinking about something, I heard Vegeta and Nappa mention others that were like Kami and Piccolo. They called him an Amikian. Krillin said, getting their attention. Are you talking about Planet Namek? Caulifla asked, cutting in the conversation. What's planet Namek? Bulma asked, having gotten her emotions under control. It's the planet where the Namekians live on, where they have their own set of Dragon Balls if what I've heard is true. Kale said, a little timid with everyone looking at her, sliding closer to Caulifla. Wait, are you saying we can use theirs to bring back our friends? Bulma asked, excitedly hoping what she heard was true. Kale nodded at this, smiling a little at the chance to correct what had happened to them. This is wonderful. 
We can go to Namek and use their Dragon Balls to wish everyone back. Bulma nearly shouted. And we can bring back Mr. Piccolo too. Gohan said in excitement. Oh no 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 no. My baby isn't going anywhere as he has lots of studying to catch up on and he won't be training anymore, especially with him. Kai Kai frowned, putting her thoughts out there. B but mom Gohan tried to defend but was interrupted. No, buts young man. I nearly lost you once and it worried me to no end. She said with a sigh seeing the conviction in his eyes. I just have one question. Naruto interrupted everyone's celebration. Where is planet Namek? He asked, loud enough for everyone to hear. He turned to the two female Saiyans. Do you know where it's at? He asked them. He was disappointed when they shook their heads. We were never told where it was by Vegeta, so all we could do was wait for him to tell us eventually if we ever were to conquer the planet. Caulifla said, getting sighs from everyone. Now hold on, I know someone who might be able to help us out. Goku said, getting curious looks from everyone. Who do you have in mind? Naruto asked, folding his arms across his chest. King Kai. He closed his eyes to concentrate. You hear all this King Kai. We could use your help on this. Goku thought, but everyone could hear being telegraphed to everyone's mind. Do I know of course I know where it is, just give me a minute to find it. King Kai exclaimed, using his antennae to find the mentioned planet, having been listening in on the conversation. While King Kai is looking for it, why don't we get to know our new friends? Naruto suggested as everyone looked over at the two Saiyans. Why? Why do all this for us? Why do you want to be friends with us? Kayla asked unsurely. Because you both seem nice and could use some better friends than the Prince of Assholes. He said, getting laughs from Caulifla. I like you, Whiskers. How do you get so strong by the way, you're around our age, yet you manage to have amazing power. Caulifla stated. Training. Lots and lots of training. Been doing it since I was four or five years old. Are you interested in sparring? He asked with a smirk, which she gave one of her own. You bet. Now that we aren't enemies anymore, you got a woman. She asked, bluntly making him laugh nervously with everyone else looking either shocked at her question or in Gohan's case confused. You um, no. He asked, more himself, but also found Caulifla and Kale to be quite something, especially Kale who looked exotic. Now hold on one second. I've known him longer and if anyone is going to be with him, it's gonna be me or at least I'll be the head woman. She muttered that last part under her breath. Caulifla would have commented but was interrupted by someone. I found it. I found planet Namek. King Kai shouted. You did that's great. Goku said in relief. Where is it then? Gohan asked, anxious to learn about it who seemed excited. The coordinates are KXY30. He told everyone. Bulma froze upon hearing this and paled a little. Are you sure King Kai? He nodded at her question. I need to check something then. She let go of Naruto and picked up her calculator and did some calculation before she sighed in frustration. What's wrong? Naruto asked, seeing her downcast expression. I just did the calculations and if we were to use our best ship to get there, it would take us thousands of years. She said, not noticing the grin on Caulifla's face. Why not look at our pods, it would take us maybe a month or so to get there with them. She suggested, getting looks from Bulma who jumped at her and hugged. That's brilliant. Your pods would actually be the better option, since they're made for traveling in space. She yelled in excitement, unknowingly giving Naruto a show as their breasts were pushed together. You got a free show Naruto, since they have interest in you, including the shy Saiyan, why don't you take them and show them who the real alpha is? Matatabi purred out. Matatabi what the hell? He mentally screamed out at his partner. What? You know it's true and besides, you'll need to repopulate the Saiyan race, being one of the last males left, why not start with these three? She asked, feigning innocence. This isn't the elemental nations where Kra is inducted unlike here, it doesn't exist. He argued back, making her chuckle. Just think about it, three sexy women. She said, ending the link leaving him to his thoughts. She's going to drive me crazy with those thoughts. He thought to himself, unknowing that she heard that and grinned, knowing that he would garner many women's attention, but had a feeling he would have a large family like he wanted. After coming back from his thoughts and conversation with a the perverted cat, they continued to talk about using their pod's technology to make a ship of their own that would be bigger to allow more than one person to use. Not only that, but specific people had volunteered to go. A week had gone by since the battle ended and a few things had happened since then, with Goku, Gohan, and Krillin being admitted to the hospital. Gohan and Krillin had minor injuries from when Naruto healed them a bit, but it was Goku who had the worse injuries with having most of his bones broken, but Naruto was able to mend them and to ease the pain, but he would still be there the longest. Alma and her father had spent that time examining the pods that Caulifla and Kale came in, and they were amazed at the technology that they had and how far advanced they were. 
it would take some time to understand it, but they were confident they could do it and have a new ship ready for them. Naruto had gotten to know Caulifla and Kale more and found them to be interesting with finding Caulifla to be more blunt and not afraid to say what she's thinking, but Kale was more reserved and showed she was nervous in general around others. Not only that, but he also discovered that she didn't like to fight like Caulifla did. Caulifla would flirt with him and would do the same with Kale pushing her towards Naruto too, making his jaw drop at the two wanting to get with him. Before anything could happen though, Bulma was upset that they were pulling moves on him, so to stake her claim on him, she marched over to him when she heard this and pulled him into a long and passionate kiss and quickly explained how she had feelings for him. He can remember how that went. Flashback. Naruto was a capsule corporation training in his gravity chamber with Caulifla and Kale, sparring with the two of them. He was taking a break after training for the last several hours. He was minding his own business when out of nowhere Caulifla walked up to him with Kale trailing behind, slowly bringing his arm in between her breasts, with Kale taking his other between hers, albeit a little reluctantly. You seem to be thinking about something if you're staring off into space there. What do you think? She asked, gesturing to her chest. Naruto started sputtering with an immense blush, not knowing what to say as he was embarrassed for being in this situation. He had liked what he was seeing though. Caulifla was laughing at his expression. She found it to be cute despite him being a warrior. It was at this time, Bulma walked in to check on Naruto when she saw Naruto, Caulifla, and Kale's positions annoyed her. Hey, what do you think you're doing to him? She called out annoyed at the situation. Oh nothing, just letting him get a feel of once he becomes our mate. What's the problem? Caulifla asked innocently. Mate like hell he'll be your mate. Bulma yelled at the duo Saiyans who were grinning while Caulifla was grinning and Kale was blushing up a storm. What are you gonna do about it huh? She smirked in a knowing manner. Bulma seemed to not think about it as she marched up to him, she grabbed the collar of his shirt and slammed her lips against his instantly slipping her tongue as he easily returned it and added his own, swapping spit between each other. After a few minutes, they pulled away for air with immense blushes on their faces. That is what I'll do. She smirked but realized what she just did and looked at Naruto but relaxed when she saw him smile at her. Then flashback. They talked after that and started dating not long after. She also told Caulifla and Kale that if they're interested in him, they have her approval, which shocked him with his jaw dropping when he heard her say that. He didn't expect Bulma or any of the others to want to share being how territorial he knew they could be, but he couldn't deny he had developed feelings for them, but more so for the scientist having known her longer. Caulifla was bold and wasn't afraid to say what she thought was hot to him. Kale was more gentle and wasn't like Caulifla, but her opposite, which was cute in his opinion. Bulma was one who liked both to be treated gently and rough. He promised to take them on dates when they weren't busy getting the ship ready for Namek. Now we find everyone including Goku who had his whole body bandaged up. There was Bulma, Rashi, Kai Kai, Gohan, Krillin, himself, Caulifla, and Kale. How long until the ship is ready so we can planet Namek? Krillin asked. The ship is being worked on as we speak. It took some time to get it figured out, but we're looking to have everything done in two weeks. With Naruto's clones helping with the building process, it's going much faster than if it was just me and my dad. Bulma said, much to everyone's surprise that Naruto could create clones. Clones? Kale asked. Yeah. They're called shadow clones, they're really helpful with that regard, along with studying since anything the clone learns, when it dispels the original will learn. He said, with a shrug, when he sweat dropped seeing everyone, especially Kai Kai looked at him with wide eyes, and the wife of Goku was looking at him with stars in her eyes like she won the jackpot. Teach Gohan that technique please. She demanded while shaking him nonstop, making him dizzy. Oh okay. I'll try to teach him, but we'll see if he can or not. Because it'd be harder to do it with Kai, since I use something else aside from Kai for my clones. He stated, still getting out of his dizzy state. Another source. Isn't Kai something that everyone uses? Caulifla asked, raising her eyebrow being confused. Are you not a Saiyan then completely? Kale asked. I'm a Saiyan, that much is true, but it's complicated. Anyway, the other energy source I can use is called Chakra, which is the combination of my spiritual and physical energies, which allow me to do things like the shadow clones or the fireball I used against you too. He explained, getting nods from them. That's right. You spat out a giant fireball at us during our fight, I've been wondering how you did that. Caulifla said, shocking everyone. You spat out a fireball? Bulma asked, but sighed remembering when he explained everything to her about his past. Yeah. I'll explain that another time, but for now we can talk about who's all going to Namek, since I don't want too big of a group going. Naruto said, getting as everyone agreed. I'm going since I'm helping build it and can repair it should anything happen during the trip. Bulma said volunteering herself. I'm going too. I'm curious to see what the Namekians are like. That and someone needs to make sure that she'll be safe. 
He grinned, pulling her closer by the waist, which made her grin at him. Halifla and Kayla looked at each other having a silent conversation before they also gave their answers. We're going to. We want to help you guys with this and help mend the damage we helped cause here. Kale said with conviction making everyone smile at their sincereness. Not only that, but we can't let you two have all the fun now can we? Caulifla grinned at the duo smashing her fist into her palm. Everyone nodded and was great with the ones who volunteered as it made them relax, knowing they were strong and could get it done, but there was one person who was looking down at his hands in contemplation. Sweetie, are you alright? Do you have a stomach ache? Kai Kai asked her son, who was gripping the sheets tightly, as if he was trying to say something. Naruto could see the look in the kid's eyes and knew what he wanted to say, so he would let this play out if he'd be able to do it. I, I want to go with them too. He finally said, surprising everyone except for Naruto who suspected something. You're kidding, right Gohan? You're still hurt, I mean why do you want to go? Bulma asked, since Kai Kai was still in shock. I want to go, I owe to Mr. Piccolo for saving my life when he took the attack instead of me. He answered, which knocked Kai Kai out of her stupor. Absolutely not. I just got my baby boy back, and now you want to leave me again by going off to another planet, I don't think so young man. She shouted, not wanting to be gone without her son any longer than he already was. I need to do this mom. Piccolo saved my life and I want to be the one who helps bring him back. Please mom. He begged his mother who had a look of conviction in his eyes still. No I won't allow it. You're going to stay here and catch up your studies that you've missed the whole year. She shook her head frantically. Kai Kai, I think you should let him go. He's really determined about this and it would mean the world to him if you supported this and besides Naruto will be with him along with the others and I know he'll look after our son. Goku was smiling at his son's loyalty to his friend. Aikai looked at Goku in surprise, not expecting him to be okay with this, but he did have some good points with Naruto there, he would no doubt be safe. After several minutes going over her thoughts, she relented with a sigh before she looked at her son with a serious expression. Okay fine. I want you to promise me though that you will be safe and not do anything crazy okay? We don't know what's out there and your father is right that Naruto can watch out for you, but I have two conditions for this, am I clear? She demanded with a stern tone. What are those conditions mom? Gohan asked nervously, hoping it wouldn't be anything too weird. I want you to study while you're gone and with the clone technique that you'll be able to learn it would make things easier and make me feel better. She said with her son nodding and looking at Naruto who nodded back with a smile of his own. I can do that in the second one? He asked less nervously now. I want Krillin to go too since I know him better than Naruto, Caulifla, and Kale despite me trusting Naruto, I don't know him as well. She said with Krillin not expecting to be brought into the conversation but could understand her reasoning. We can make that work. Six people is doable as it wouldn't change our plans for the ship. Bulma commented. I look after the little guy no problem, so what's next until the ship is ready? Krillin asked, now with everything planned out. I'll be spending the next two weeks with Gohan here working on the shadow clone technique, so which means we'll be building up your reserves until they're at an acceptable level, because as it is now, you could make only one or two clones at most before you'd be exhausted, and we don't want that happening. Of course I don't want you making too many anyhow, just where you won't get as tired from making the clones. He explained, getting nods from everyone, but a question came to Goku's mind. Hey Naruto, what would happen if someone used that technique without the proper energy reserves for it? He asked, making everyone look at him wondering why he'd ask something like that. Since it won't be from Chakra when he'd use this technique and his Kai, the consequences won't be the same as if someone like me did, but the person would die since in my home planet, people can't live without Chakra in them. He explained getting shocked looks from everyone. But Gohan will be alright with using it won't he? Kai Kai quickly asked, not wanting her son to die because of her wanting him to learn it. No, he won't. He'd just be exhausted, which is why I said we'll be working on getting his reserves up by doing different exercises that will help them get bigger. So, there's nothing to worry about. He assured her as she sighed in relief knowing her son would be okay. Alright with that being said, we'll meet over at Kame House in two weeks. Bulma declared as everyone agreed with the location. As everyone was heading out, Kalfila and Kale approached Naruto wanting answers, now that they know he's from another planet instead of Earth. So another planet huh? When were you going to tell us about that mister? Caulifla narrowed her eyes at her mate who was sweating from her intense stare. Well, it. Um. Bulma, some help. He asked his girlfriend who shook her head at him. Nope, you started this, you need to finish this on your own. Good luck babe, but girls don't be so hard on him. She told them, making him relax a little, but he still didn't feel entirely safe from their wrath, as Kale wasn't looking too happy either, but more curious about his home planet than annoyed like Caulifla was. Well. What do you want to know about it? 
I haven't been there in years, so I don't know what it'd be like now as I'm sure things would have changed by now. He said as they continued to stare at him. What's the name of the planet and can you tell me at least the main points? Is it like Earth? Caulifla asked, wanting to know after thinking for a few minutes. Well it's divided up into five major villages with the rest with minor villages being much smaller. The major villages are the five great villages with the first one being Sunagakur, the land of wind, Kumagakur, the land of lightning, Iwagakur, the land of stone, Kurigakur, the land of water, and lastly Kanahakagur, the land of fire, which was my home. Just like I mentioned, the people there use chakra and they can learn to utilize it in the academy to become shinobi when they graduate. With each village, he explained quickly, not wanting to bore them. Shinobi? That's their form of military then I take it? She asked to see him nod. Why are they named after elements? Kayla asked, being confused about that. Well every shinobi is more attuned with the element they were born in like if you were born in Kumo, then your element affinity would most likely be lightning, or in Konoha most shinobis tended to have affinities for fire. He said, making them give o as their responses catching on to what he was saying. Are they strong? They must have strong fighters right? Caulifla asked, grinning at the prospect of fighting a shinobi. I mean yeah there, but they won't be like us who can use Kai, but there are many strong shinobis there you could fight against if you wanted to. He shrugged his shoulders, used to her desire to fight people. Yes. She pumped her fist in the air. We'll have to visit so I can see for myself. She grinned in anticipation. Hale noticed him flinching at the thought, something that Caulifla didn't notice, but she did, and it only made her wonder what could have possibly happened to get him to react like that to merely visiting his old home. She would need to talk to him alone about it. Maybe. We'll have to see. Right now, we should worry about preparing for Namek. Well I have a clone with Gohan, I can train with you too. He said, hoping to change the subject and by the expression on Caulifla's face getting bigger it worked. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go. She yelled as she started dragging him off, before her stomach along with his decided to make themselves known, making them blush in embarrassment with how hungry they must be. After we get something to eat, we can train afterwards. Kale giggled seeing their embarrassed blushes. Let's go eat. I'm hungry myself. She said as they nodded as they left the hospital. Two weeks later. Nothing much had happened in the two weeks for everyone, except they were preparing for the trip to Namek. Bulma and her father had as predicted managed to finish the ship that could now fit up to ten people. Bulma and Naruto went on some dates during that time, and they went to an expensive restaurant, Bulma's idea, and they had a great time. They talked about Naruto's family as he never talked about them in the past, but also talked about his different teachers that he had, and how he did miss them. To say, she was pissed about how his supposed godfather would nearly ruin his family for a prophecy, by putting his parents in an illusion that made them forget about him. He was able to calm her down, but it took some convincing to do and more dates which he had no problem with. Despite only dating for a few weeks with Bulma, they had known each other for much longer and so were more comfortable in being more intimate than with the others. One night they were at home after having gone out for dinner, they decided to settle down to watch a movie, they decided to take things to the next level. Flashback. Naruto and Bulma were in the living room watching a movie while they were cuddling. As the movie progressed, Bulma turned towards her boyfriend and kissed him on the lips which was returned immediately. It didn't take long for tongues to come into play as they battled for dominance, but as usual Naruto won it. They pulled apart after a few minutes for air. You could see their cheeks were flushed, but smiling, and he had a huge grin on his face. What was that for? Not that I'm complaining, but it was unexpected. He said looking at her. I have something important to tell you. It's something I have been thinking about for the last couple of days, and well she trailed off nervously, biting her lip making him look at her in worry. Is everything okay babe? He asked worriedly, but to his relief she shook her head. I'm fine. I I want you to take me now. She admitted through a blush on her cheeks that would match a tomato. This surprised him. They were planning on waiting before everything settled down for after their trip to Namek before they did it, but she must have become too impatient. Are you sure? He asked, wanting her to be sure about this. I am. She said with determination that he loved about her. Then flashback. Two weeks later. Naruto spent the two weeks teaching Gohin how to use the shadow clone technique with Kai, as he had figured out how to do it, but he preferred to do it with Chakra, since it was easier for him to do it. After mastering it in two days, Naruto spent the rest of the time working him to the bone on different exercises that would drain his reserves and expand them. At first he could summon three clones, but by the end of the two weeks he could summon six before he was tired from it. And that was enough as he only needed a few of them for his studies, as he could now focus on his training, while the clones did the studying for him. Aikai was so happy and thankful that she hugged him excitedly, but had nearly broken his back with how strong she was without even realizing it. 
Naruto got to know the bald monk a bit more and found him to be really funny and someone you could count on. He was looking forward to working with him. And lastly, his two female Saiyan girlfriends he had spent most of his time outside of going on dates with Bulma and hanging out with Krillin, he would be training with the two. He pushed them beyond their limits cursing his name and calling him a sadistic bastard. Well Caulifla did anyway, Will Kale would powder cute face at him and grumble about him not getting any hugs from her and such, but they wanted to train, not have a good time. Speaking of their relationship, it had gotten better for the three of them. He and Kalfila had several makeout sessions that had nearly escalated to them having sex. It wouldn't be much longer until she'd want kids as she had told how she had always wanted a family and their sane instincts were starting to get control of them. With Kale, she was wanting to take things slower as she was more timid than her surrogate sister. She wasn't a fan of going out on dates, so they spent the night watching some movies which was nice, relaxing, and still romantic. He found out that she was more gentle when they do anything intimate, such as kissing and love to cuddle. Though it took some time for her to get comfortable enough, but it worked out. Now everyone was gathered at Kame House, except they were missing the five-year-old Saiyan to see them off on their journey. So how are the girls treating you, Naruto? Krillin asked, wondering how his friend was handling three girlfriends. He. They're great and I love them, but between you and me they can be a little nuts. He whispered the last part to him, but was hit in the head by a toolbox. What the hell? How the hell do I feel any pain from that? I can tank Kai blasts, yet a toolbox hurts me, he questioned himself. What did you say about us? Caulifla yelled, smirking as she gave Bulma a high five making him groan from it. Kale was looking at them and chuckling knowing that this is her life, but she wouldn't wish for it to be any different. Look, I think I see them. Rashi pointed at the air car that's approaching the island, making Naruto sigh in relief. Oh thank god. He muttered under his breath. They watched as the car landed and were waiting for Gohan to come out, but were surprised to see him wearing something, as if he was going to a private school or something similar to a uniform. It took everything Naruto had to not laugh at the poor kid, but sadly it wasn't the case for some of the others who didn't have the same self-control as he did. Ha 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 ha. What the hell are you wearing kid? We're not going to school. Caulifla laughed out loud as Kale was chuckling, but holding back on laughing outright. Oh don't be so mean to him, I think he looks absolutely handsome. Kai Kai gushed at her son's look. Dad thought I looked funny too. Gohan grumbled as he looked down at his clothing, remembering his dad laughing. Hey, it's no problem kid. Now that everyone's here, we should get going. Right Bulma dear? He asked as he saw her nod at his question. Right. Let's go, everyone. She declared as everyone boarded the ship leaving Kai Kai, Ox King and Rashi left. Be careful son. Krillin, Naruto you better protect my baby boy or there will be hell to pay, do you hear me? She screamed at them as they nodded frantically, not wanting to anger her. Everyone straps yourselves in, we're going to be taking off shortly and I don't want to hear any complaints about not being warned. Bulma said seriously in her tone. It didn't take long for everyone to find a seat. Once everyone was situated, Bulma started the ship and after running through things, they took off leaving the island, and not long after were they in the atmosphere which was bumpy for everyone, except for Caulifla and Kale who were used to these things. Once they were out of the atmosphere, she unstrapped her seatbelt with the others following suit. Okay, so from this point on, it'll be smooth riding from here on out. So until then, why don't I show everyone around the ship? Naruto, can you watch the ship while I saw them around? She asked her boyfriend who nodded affirmatively. She thanked him quickly as she led everyone else to give them the tour. Now that I have the time, let's see how this goes. He said to himself as he went through familiar hand signs for a jutsu he hadn't used in years. Puchius no jutsu. He said, slamming his hand on the ground with a puff of smoke. Out of the smoke came a familiar looking slug that was looking around noticing she was in an unfamiliar room. Where am I? Kitsaya asked, looking around confusedly. Hello, Kitsaya-sama. It's it's been a long time. She heard a voice. Turning around she saw someone that was unfamiliar to her. She hadn't seen this man before as she would have remembered someone like this, especially the tail that she was seeing that was around his waist. Who are you? She asked, wanting to cut straight to the point. It's me. Naruto. He said timidly, not sure what to expect, but was surprised when she gasped and crawled closer to him, offering his arm, she slid on it till she got to his shoulder, so she could get a better look at him. Naruto-kun. Is it really you? What happened to you? It's been a few years since anyone has heard from you, but how are you so different? She asked her summoner, who sighed. That's a long story. I'll do my best to explain everything and why I look this way and much older than I should. He told her who nodded. He went on to explain how he was transported to a new planet like everyone was told. What they didn't know was that his appearance had changed to become something more than human. 
how he was turned into a Saiyan, where he's been training with Guardian of Earth for the last 11 years well 13, if you count the time he spent in the hyperbolic time chamber. And what he's been doing since he finished his training, with how he had fought some Saiyans who were wanting to destroy the planet but were stopped by him and his friends, and now they were heading to another planet to find some special orbs that can be used to bring back their friends. He left out seeing three women, since he would get pummeled by his mother and godmother for being a pervert in their words. After he finished explaining everything, she just looked at him blankly for a minute before sighing. Arito kun you sure have lived an interesting life on Earth. I'm happy that you're alright though, with everyone being worried about you and if you were safe. Your parents have missed you so much and are really sorry about everything and wanted to assure you that what they did wasn't their own doing. She said, but he smiled at her. I already know Katsaya. I was made aware of everything by Yami and Kami that it wasn't their fault and that it was all the perverts doing. I'm glad that they still care about me and love me. I miss everyone too. He said with her nodding. You said you've been living on Earth for 11 years right? She asked, getting a nod from him. Naruto-kun. It's been five years for us since you disappeared. She revealed getting a shocked look from him. Five years he yelled in shock at hearing the time difference for him and them being that different. Yes. It's shocking to hear that I know, but it's true. She said with a nod. Wow. How's everyone else been? Kasumi, Narumi. Makoto, Fugaku, Tsunade, Hiruzen, Shizun, everyone. He asked. I'm sorry to say Naruto-kun, but Fugaku died three years ago when he tried to stop a coup that his clan was planning against the village. She told him solemnly, making his eyes go wide at the news. He was like an uncle or a second father to him when he was training him. How's Makoto handling everything? Is she okay? Is my mom helping her with her loss? He asked her quickly, wanting to know what's come of his second mother figure and other godmother. She did. It wasn't easy for her to move on, but she did. She's the clan head until Itachi is ready. Everyone else has been fine. There were multiple survivors in the clan that were against the coup like Fugaku. She said, getting a sigh in relief from him. What would like me to do now? Do you want to let everyone know you're okay and that they don't need to worry about you? She asked. Yes, but don't tell them about my changes as I want that to be a surprise if I ever visit them. I think it would be good to do that after we do what we came to do on Namek. Nothing more if you could Katsaya. He asked, seeing her naughty smiled at her as she disappeared in a puff of smoke, indicating she was gone. And to think so much had changed in five years for them, but it was eleven for me. I'll be sure to visit everyone, especially you Makoto-chan. He said to himself when he felt a pair of arms wrap around his neck and two heads on his shoulders. He looked to reveal Bulma, Kale, and Caulifla. They had overheard a good part of the conversation and they were just as shocked to hear the time difference. Hey girls, I'm alright. How do you guys like the ship? He asked them, seeing Caulifla grin at him. Oh I'm going to love this place and it's all thanks to my boyfriend and my harem sister for this. She grinned at him. I have a question though about that slug. What was it exactly? How did it get on the ship? Kayla asked quietly and curiously. That was Katsaya and she was the boss of the slugs that I signed a contract with to aid me in battle, should I ever need it. She specializes in acid and healing. She along with my godmother Tsunade and her apprentice Shizun Kato taught me everything there was about medical ninjutsu. Maybe you'll get to meet them sometime. He said with a smile at that thought. I'm sure they're great people. I hope to meet them someday. Why did you summon her now of all times though? Bulm asked. Well now that I had time to do it since I've never had a moment to do it until now with all the training I did, schooling I was doing, and dealing with the Saiyans until now I have a little time. He explained getting nods. Enough of that, we got some training to do Naruto, so now we have the time let's get to it. We have a month before we get to Namek and I don't want to waste any time doing it. Caulifla yelled out in excitement. Alright. Just remember you asked for it. He smirked. A month later. One month now had gone by since they left Earth and they were finally getting to planet Namek. The first thing that Gohan did was change clothes with ones that he had secretly packed without his mom knowing which made him laugh at the kid's sneaky side. He wore the same outfit that Piccolo wore and explained how he wore it to honor him and how he respected him almost as much as his father. Not a lot was done with Naruto and the others, except he would train everyone, except for Bulma who was making sure the ship had no problems. He was pushing everyone more so they could be prepared for anything that could happen. They had found out that the gravity machine that was installed could go up to 200 times Earth's normal gravity, but he only went to 60 with Gohan and Krillin, since they were slow on getting used to each level, and Kale and Caulifla, he managed to get 150 times which was good, given he didn't want them to just be used to it, but to be able to do anything with ease in that kind of gravity. They all had grown stronger over the month, but the two female Saiyans had really grown in the one month. It was getting harder to spar with them as they were improving quickly. 
Every time they improved, he'd have to push out more power to push them. Bulma had installed robots that could shoot lasers at them, and Naruto had them dodging their attacks, as he wanted to work on their reflexes and agility, while under the gravity to make it harder for them. Of course he hadn't forgotten to do his own training. He'd been training at 200 times the gravity. He wanted to shape his Kai into different weapons, and so far he'd managed to do two weapons, finding the ability to do it unique as not many, if there were any could do it with enough control. He also pushed his body to the limit as he decided to add seal weights to make it even more challenging for him which he welcomed. He almost regretted it because as soon as he activated them while under the gravity chamber's pressure, he nearly collapsed, but he loved the challenge. He also realized how his power level had increased a lot, but he didn't know how much since he hadn't used his full power in a long time. He didn't use it against Caulifla, Kale, or Nappa since he didn't need to. Now everyone was in their seats as Bulma had informed everyone that they were approaching Namek. Caulifla and Kale were wearing their usual clothes along with Krillin with his orange guy and Gohan with his clothes that resembled Piccolo's Naruto's however had changed as he was wearing a black form-fitting short-sleeved shirt and black pants with black kung fu shoes and blue stockings. He also wears a flowing red vest with a long backside that is secured with a blue obi tied over it at his waist and blue armbands. Think Xenogoku's outfit. Alright guys, strap yourselves in we're about to enter the atmosphere which will make it bumpy getting in. She said to them. It's been an interesting month, don't you think so guys? I've learned a lot from Naruto-sensei. Gohin said. True. It would be better if he wasn't a sadist. Krillin whispered to them, making them snicker with Naruto pouting having heard that. Hey. I'm not that bad. He shouted comically at him, making everyone laugh. It's not a bad thing. It just means you want us to be strong and can push us. Kalfila said, trying to cheer him up. He certainly never took it easy on us. He's still gentle though outside of training. He's such a teddy bear. Kale teased at the end. Hail of all people teased him. Think about that for a second. We're coming into the atmosphere now. Bulma yelled out. I don't want to die. We're all going to die. Krillin screamed, panicking from the rough entrance as the ship was shaking, but was shut up when Caulifla punched him in the face, knocking him out in his seat as she was getting annoyed with his constant yelling. They didn't have to wait long for the shaking to stop, making them sigh in relief, knowing that the rest of the landing would go easier from this point on. They were able to land, and Naruto was looking forward to meeting the Namkians and hoped they would let them use their Dragon Balls. Alright, before we can leave the ship, I need to check to make sure it's breathable for us, or if we need to be careful if it'll be too dangerous for us to do. Bulma was explaining when she looked up to see only Naruto there who was chuckling when he pointed to the window when they saw Gohan, Krillin, Caulifla, and Kale outside already. She was about to yell in frustration when he silenced her with a kiss that she melted in and soon turned into a small makeout session. Not that I'm complaining, but what was that for? She asked breathlessly. To calm you down. You should have known they'd do something like this. That and I need to have a reason to kiss my girlfriend. He asked, while well, smirking at her blushed face, but had a wide grin on her face. True. All right, let's go meet with the others, and we can get started on looking for the Dragon Balls. She said, leaving to follow the others with him doing the same. Okay, first we should put away the ship so we don't risk damaging it. Naruto said as they all nodded and Gohan pushed the button changing it into its capsule and had Bulma hold on to it. Let's see she was cut off by two people who approached them, but they weren't friendly looking. They had the same armor that Vegeta had, which instantly made them assume they were enemies. Look what we have here. Some tourists on this backwater planet. The first one mocked. Right, but look at those two. Aren't they the ones who were with Vegeta and Nappa? They must be the Saiyans who Vegeta thought was gone. The second person pointed out. Well well well, what do we have here? Some traitors it seems like. Lord Frieza would love to have a word with you too. The first guy smirked evilly, making them sweat in fear at hearing the name Frieza confusing Gohan and Krillin, but Bulma and Naruto were already aware of who that was. Now come with us, so we can he was silenced when Naruto appeared in front of him holding his hand out in front of him. He didn't say anything as he blasted him with a Kai blast, incinerating him instantly, as the other guy watched in fear at seeing his friend killed with no difficulty. Naruto turned towards his opponent and disappeared, he looked around having no idea where he went until he felt something behind him, but it was too late as a Kai blade came to life stabbing him in the back going through where his heart would be, killing him instantly. Well this situation just went from bad to worse if Frieza is here or at least his forces. Naruto stated with a frown. He must be here for the Dragon Balls. He must be wanting immortality like Vegeta does, so it'll be harder to get them from here on out. Any ideas? Caulifla asked, trying not to panic at having to deal with Frieza's army. The end. Thanks for watching, also remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.